momentarily, we hope. This is the coin today. The eagle is heads. This side is tails. St. Louis is the bitters. His call is heads. It is tails. Atlanta won the toss. Receive. Which way do you want to kick? Stay where you are. Falcons have won the toss Atlanta and will toss. receive. Will receive. And you don't think that's what this joint didn't want. No. <laughs> they wanted number seven on the field as quick as they could get him out there. Well, so Michael Vick, who is one and one in his NFL postseason career, the victory in the snow and wind at Lambeau Field and the loss the following week at the vet in Philadelphia a couple of years ago. And let's welcome 43-year-old Jim L. Mora to his first postseason game, Arch. Well, I think one of the things that he's had to guard against, just like everybody else, is being too jacked up for the game. And he's, he's, I talked to him, and it wasn't so much that he had to keep his players grounded, as he's an administrator out there at Flowery Branch, and everybody in the building was jacked up. Right. So Rich McKay would drift by the office from time to time and say, Jimmy, you okay? And I guess he was. He's here tonight. Official game time, 821. That's Bulova Watch Time. Bulova, the official timekeeper of Falcons Radio Network, available at It's About Time stores and of all near you well well you know Wes I've been in games like this before played in the one in 98 Frisco the last one here it's going to take a couple of hits before you really get the feel and understand that this is the playoffs but you cannot measure how intense how physical man how aggressive how every play is going to count man and I'm telling you one play one mess up one drop ball can be the difference and it's unbelievable how the playoffs are in the NFL. Jeff Wilkins set to kick it away. Allen Rossum 21.6 average through the regular season. He had four returns for an average of 22 three against the Rams in week two. Is deep to receive Atlanta will move from left to right toward the west end of the big dome. White towels waving in the air and the ball fell off the tee. I thought that only happened outdoors. It's the breeze from the collective 70,000 towels that have done it here tonight. 60,000 towels. This is Joe DiCamillis' crew's opportunity to establish tempo. And this is one of the strengths of the Atlanta Falcons is their return group with Alan Rossum bringing it back. Kerry Davis added to the team today is up to the near side to kick his deep here to the three and Rossum will play from the near side 10 15 Rossum 20 and brought down shy of the 24 yard line and that's where Atlanta goes to work 20 yard return by Allen Rossum and here comes Michael Vick Dane Looker one of the wide receivers for the Rams made the tackle shy of the 24 Atlanta finished the regular season 20th in the NFL in offense at 317 8 the Rams 17th in the league stopping uh, our total defense at 334-6. They were 29th against the run. Atlanta number one running the ball at 167. They averaged 180 yards and went over 200 four times here at home. McCrary and Dunn in the eye. Crumpler steps off the formation to the left side. White to the left, Price to the right. And the first play from scrimmage is a give to Dunn. He'll cut back, get across the 25. Nudges out to about the 28-yard line. A gain of nearly four on the play. Robert Thomas, the middle linebacker. Tony Hargrove, the former Yellow Jacket, make the tackle for the Rams. Now they immediately featured the zone play coming out to their strong side behind Algie Crumpler, Schaefer, and Keenan Forney. One thing the Rams had a tough time doing last time in week two was defending the bootleg. Once again, no one home on the bootleg versus Vic. White goes wide to the left. Price into the slot at the left side. Crumpler the tight end here to the right on second down, and let's call it six. McCrary in motion, Vic to throw for the first time. Does so to Crumpler. Caught at the 30, 31 yard line. Road to the field turf by Tommy Polly. Just shy of the 32. It'll be a gain of four more. And let's call it third and a long two, shy of the 32. So Vic underneath to Algie Crumpler. Yeah, nice pass from Vic to Crump. Just a, the Rams is putting, playing that in in the nine, way, wide nine. They didn't do that last time. They got a tight, uh, linebacker over the tight end over Algie and the guy in the wide nine. Beverly comes in. Atlanta was 18th in the NFL on third down at 36.3. The Rams were 16th defending, allowing opponents 36.4% conversion rate. McCrary out of the backfield in motion. Vic will sprint to his left. Now he'll step back up in the pocket. Touchback. Vic first down 40, 45, midfield. He's racing to the near side, 30, 25, and out of bounds he goes. Deep. And I mean deep. 
deep in Ram territory to the 21. Michael Vick sets sail, 46 yards. It's first and 10. Tommy Polly is the guy that missed the original tackle. Then they came back downfield. Antoine Edwards forced him out of bounds. They lined up in a pressure look, three down inside, and they play man coverage. Now, if you're going to play man coverage, there's nobody for the quarterback. And as soon as Vic broke contain, he was gone. Nice blocking by Todd Weiner picking up guys trying to come and get Mike on his way on the cutback. Good job by the offensive line helping Mike. Measured all the way to 47 yards. First and 10 at the Ram 21. Well, St. Louis had to feel good when that play first started and feel awful at the end of it. Two to the left. Crumple the tight end to the right side. Here comes White in motion. First and 10 at the Ram 21. Vic will give to Dunn. He counters back inside. Lost his balance as he's pushed over by Robert Thomas, shy of the 17-yard line. Let's call it a gain of an easy three for Warwick Dunn. Uh, and it'll be second down and seven. Fred McCray, the fullback who's basically jumping in there for Justin Griffith and the host of fullbacks, does a good job on number 50 blocking piece of Timmy Amosa, springing Warwick Dunn. That could have went for more. Nice blocking. Early stages of the ball game. Opening drive of the ball game. And Atlanta attacking now at the Rams 18. Red zone opportunity for the Falcons. Second down and seven. Two receivers here to the right. Offset I McCrary in motion now to the boundary at the left. Here's Vic. Play action to Dunn. He'll look. Throw down the seam. Caught. Crumpler. Touchdown. Algernon. Now we got some scuffling off the ball. They're going to call him short of the end zone? No, he's in. He's in. He's in. Great protection by that line, Dave. Real good protection. And what the Rams tried to do to Algie Crumpler was to bang him at the line of scrimmage with the defensive end and then have Adam, Adam Archuleta slam as he came upfield. He was but, he was double teamed for a second there, Yeah, Dave. he cut back to the inside, yeah. and Vic had enough time. You talked about the protection, Chuck to put the ball on Algy. It couldn't be a better start west for the Falcons. Five plays, 76 yards, 18-yard strike. Victor Crumpler, his seventh touchdown catch of the year. Feely's point after is away, and it's perfect. I talked about it in Chucky's Keys, West getting a fast start. This is what the Falcons want to do. They hit him in the mouth early. Just keep it rolling. Timeout on the field, 12 minutes to go, opening quarter of play. Atlanta 7, St. Louis nothing. Let's go and huddle on the other side with the Rams. Larry Marmi, their defensive coordinator. What do Rams do there, Dave, you think they'll adjust now in this huddle? Well, what I saw was they went to the bear look, and everybody's familiar with that, covering the guard center guard and then putting ends to the outside. Chuck talked about they've even widened it more. They've walked the linebacker inside, and they walked Archuleta up over the tight end, creating an eight-man front. But what that does, a linebacker is a lot weaker against our big tight ends, believe me. Feely to kick it away, deep to receive. Avion Quezon, and he'll play from a yard deep. Quezon 5, 10, 15, sprints to the outside, and B. Scott hauls him down shy of the 20-yard line. Brian Scott on the tackle. Quezon... Average 20.2 a return on five gets last week in the Pacific Northwest. Timeout on the field, 11.53 to go first quarter. 7-0 Falcons. These messages now from our fine affiliates. Thank you very much. Some kind of ball game, by the way, at Heinz Field today. Here's Mark Bulger, who's hit nearly 69% of his passes, nearly 1,000 yards, six touchdowns, three picks in his last three games, but he was sacked ten times. Falk starts in the backfield. Cam Cleland, the tight end in the game. First down give. Falk, he'll try to cut to the outside. Kearney can't get to him. He gets across the 20. Hammered out of bounds by the rookie D'Angelo Hall at the 23. It'll be a gain of five for the veteran Marshall Falk. Nice penetration by Ed Jasper, making Marshall have to bounce back far on that play. Brady Smith, everybody getting penetration. Nowhere for Falk to go. It makes only his skill gets him outside on that play. D. Hall gave him a nice little thigh yeah. bruise, possibly. D'Angelo <laughs> Hall's idol is Deion Sanders. He tackles. A lot beyond better. what Deion Sanders yes. ever thought about doing. And I played with Deion, and I can attest to that. <laughs> Torrey Holt goes to the right with Cleland. Here comes Holt in motion to the left. Good speed, Falk behind Bulger. The give is to Falk, running with a good bit of authority out across the 29 to a first down at the 30. Marshall Falk before D'Angelo Hall makes yet another tackle. It's a gain of six and right at a first down for the Rams. But you see a good job on that right side by the Rams. Grant Wood, my Blaine Sap Sapia, how you pronounce his name? Sapia. Sapia. Sapia, good job by him on Patrick Kearney walling pad inside where he couldn't escape. And they're trying to come out, Wes and Chuck, and trying to establish some physical presence yeah. up front. Right. 
They're playing both tight ends. Now single back in Falk. And here's Kevin Curtis in motion. The give will be to Falk again. He'll counter back. Brady Smith collars him and drops him after a gain of about five, five and a half for Marshall Falk, who went through the regular season with 774 yards. He had 55 on 13 carries last week at Seattle. Only averaged 36 and a half yards, though, in his last four games. Just 20 yards on 12 carries back in week two against his Falcon defense. So, you know, he's got a little something extra to, to get going. Mike March running the football in his first three plays. Remember earlier this year he had a ball game where they threw the ball on their first 13 plays. Here's Bulger on second and six. Give will be to Falk. He'll cut back across the 40, and Scott makes the play, but it's a first down for St. Louis at the 43-yard line. It's a gain of seven for Marshall Falk. What you see on that play is the Falcons are, are outflanked. All and they're they're thinking they're going to the right, but they're really looking to cut back. Falk is a is a cutback runner. Got to get inside of that. Matt Stewart gets walled outside by the tight end. That's his play. Corey Hall has to be outside of Stewart and take his responsibility. Sapia with Timmerman, McCollum, Newton, and Pace up front. And now Stephen Jackson, the number one from Oregon State's coming in the game to spell Falk. First and ten at the 43. Play action. Bulger to throw for the first time. Down the seam. Caught Kevin Curtis behind the Atlanta secondary. And Curtis goes in for the touchdown. Kevin Curtis and a 57-yard touchdown. And for Curtis, his third score of the year. And the Rams have answered back in under three minutes. Well, that's what they do, Wes. They've scored. This is the 19th drive this season three minutes or less and all they do is establish the run the first three times they hand the ball to Falk now they play action pass hold the linebackers up just a little bit shallow and get the ball to Curtis in behind us in behind the linebackers two minutes 46 seconds a five play 81 yard drive and we're a uh, Jeff Wilkins extra point from being tied snap spot kick is away and it is good timeout on the field and the dome crowd quieted by the five play 81 yard drive from the Rams. Tied up at seven and we're underway at the dome. Our coverage continues Quiet after this local guys. message. The Rams the came back and answered pretty quick. Five plays, 81 yards, two minutes, 46 seconds. Bulger throws his 22nd touchdown. Well, actually it's his 24th. He threw two last week at Cincinnati. You know, the Rams. Or Seattle, I should say. Yeah, he's surprised to see the Rams run against the Falcons early. Here's the kick by Wilkins toward Allen Rossum. Here to the near side, playing from the deep corner at the two. Cuts back to the far side, 15, spins inside, and will not reach the 20. Good play by the Rams on special teams. Brandon Chiller, the linebacker, fourth-round pick from UCLA there to make the stop, and they measure it right to the 20-yard line. 9.07 to play, first quarter, 7-7 game. More after this network message. National You're Football League, 24 hours a day, then the NFL Network is what you need. Call your cable or satellite provider and get the NFL Network. Delighted to have you along tonight with Chuck Smith and David Archer. West Durham at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. We're tied at 7-all. 9.07 to play here in the opening period. Each club scored on their opening drive. Vic, a 18-yard strike to Algie Crumpler. Mark Bulger, 57 yards to Kevin Curtis. Falcons with the ball for the second time. First and 10 at the 20. We got some movement. No flags. Vic sets. He's going to throw the go route. Marker now has been thrown, and it's incomplete down the far side for Brian Finneran. Is it on Atlanta or the Rams? Let's wait and see. Looked like a quick snap from Todd McClure. He got the, the Rams in the neutral zone. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. 79, Ryan Pickett looked to be the guilty party. Pretty It'll be smart. First and five at the 25. Pretty smart play by Vic and Fennerin. Yeah. Fennerin was lined up outside and just took off down the field. Vic realized or thought he did, had a uh, free play, so he put it up to Fennerin. It's the veteran move right there. So it'll be first and five after the first penalty of the ball game. Veteran stays in. He goes to the left. Crumpler and Beverly both in, two tight ends. Play action by Vic. He'll boot back to the left. Now he'll turn, loop it back. Oh, my goodness. Almost picked off by Antoine Edwards on a pass intended for Eric Beverly. I don't think Mike saw that one. Antoine Edwards, the former Clemson Tiger. Yeah, I don't was think he, right there. He, well, he, he should have gunned that one, put a little, little more zip on it. He floated that one a little too much. You talk when you come out as a quarterback on a bootleg, try to find the middle defender. Yeah. He does not find the safety here, tries to loop it into Beverly, and Edwards was there, should have picked it off. 
McCrary now back with Dunn. White here to the near side. Dez in motion to join Peerless Price on the far side. Here's the give. This is Warwick Dunn sprinting. He'll have a first down 30, 35. Turned over at the 38 of Atlanta. It's a 13-yard gain tripped up by Robert Thomas. And it's an Atlanta first down. Now that's that inside zone play. Warwick Dunn got the eyes of an eagle. He always finds the right hole. Good blocking on that play by Todd McClure walling off the nose guard. And they're running against the nine-man front. So if Warwick Dunn can crease the front wall, he's going to be gone. And this is just a shoelace tackle or he's gone. Yep. Thomas might have saved the touchdown there. Now they sprint Dunn out to the left. McCrary here to the right. Vic from an empty backfield. And St. Louis in defensive chaos. Here's Vic against the blitz. Stepping here to the near side. He's going to load and throw for Crumpler. Almost intercepted by Tommy Polly, who was coming back underneath the intended receiver, Algie Crumpler. Arch Chuck. Crump's had about a month off. How's he doing tonight? I thought he looked a little stiff there. That was a play where he was looking, uh, Vic was looking for him to come back and help him because he was scrambling. Crumpler decided to stay vertical and not come back and help his quarterback and almost allowed the interception. Yeah, Second down and 10 after the incompletion, Chuck. Yeah, I see Crump on that route watching the replay. Got a little limp there. You're right, Dave. I can see a little stiffness in that knee. Federer into the ball game. Brian goes to the left side this time. Dwayne Blakely has come in with Eric Beverly. Crumpler sets this play out with an eye. Here's Vic giving to Warwick Dunn. Again, splitting the front. Dunn, 15, he's gone. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, Five. Travis Fisher was wasting his time chasing Warren Dunn. Touchdown Atlanta. That's an understatement, Wes. <laughs> you can't play that. You can't play that eight and nine man front. And if nobody scrapes to make the play right as initially as he breaks the line of scrimmage, he's gone. The Rams are trying to crowd the line with eight and nine defenders. And the Falcons have done it twice. The big run and now the Dunn run. They break the line. They're gone. Son. Every, what, was, what was Travis Fisher thinking, Chuck? What was I, I don't know what he was thinking, but I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> Robert Thomas got hammered by Fred McCrary, our fourth fullback on the season. Here's Feely's point after. The kick is away, and it's good. That's $100 for Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Compliments of Brawny Paper Towels and our Kicking for Kids program. Oh, wild and woolly early here at the Big Dome, boys. <laughs> fireworks, man. Fireworks, man. I thought it was going to be a high-scoring affair. And it has been so far. <laughs> Local message now. Falcons and Rams, Rams get it back. Seven. Falcons have scored on their first two drives, making it 14 to 7. Warwick Dunn gets his 10th touchdown of the year on a 62 yard gallop. And here is Feely to kick it away again. Avion Kaysan deep. It's an end over end kick. Kaysan from a yard deep will bring it out. 5, 10, 15, 20, and he got mashed by. Sadiq Shabazz and Artie Omer at the 23-yard line. It's a 24-yard return, first and 10. Well, we've had some serious hits here, but we've had some high-wire plays from both offenses so far. Been fun so far, huh? And for a quarterback, <laughs> as a defensive player, I'm, I'm going crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm going crazy up notice, here, Wes. Notice the quarterback's yeah. laughing no. and the D end is having a breakdown. <laughs> Don't take a break because their guy can throw the rock. That's it. <laughs> Well, Curtis, who caught the score, goes to the far side. Dane Lookers coming in the game. That's Archer's favorite player. Here to the near side. I formation. Out of the backfield comes Torrey Holt. Three receivers. First down give. This is Marshall Falk. 25, and then Webster takes him down shy of the 27. It'll be a gain of, let's call it, four on the play for the veteran Marshall Falk. Webster makes the stop. No matter how much it looks like, I think, that they're trying to give the baton to Steven Jackson, it's still not Marshall Falk, Chuck. I mean, the guy is playing like you'd expect him to play. Looks like the Marshall Falk of old. But watch out. Everywhere Brady Smith lines up, that's where Mike Marks is attacking right now. They watch that Kansas City film. Second down and six. Ball at the 27. Curtis and Holt to the near side. Dane Looker to the far side. Remember Isaac Bruce not playing tonight. The hamstring injury. He's a scratch. Play action by Bulger. Sets in the pocket. Now he'll throw back here looking for Torrey Holt. And it's overshot incomplete. Beasley had rolled over with Jason Webster in coverage for Atlanta. And it's now third down and six. Very similar play that they were able to get Torrey Holt the ball on early in the game against Seattle. Get Torrey Holt on that deep corner route. They victimized Michael Boldware, Aaron Beasley, a veteran 
one of the guys on this team that's played some playoff, has some playoff experience. Beasley, this is his 11th playoff game. First, first third down of the night for the Rams. Chuck, they hit 42% during the regular season. Ninth best in the league. Atlanta 14th best stopping it. First time Bulger's got knocked on his butt. Third down and six at the 27. Shotgun formation for Bulger. Backs to either side and three receivers. Snap to him. Bulger drops back. Looks. He'll set. Throw here to the left side. Curtis the catch. Out of bounds and a first down for the Rams. At their 48-yard line, it's a 21-yard throw and catch. Mark Bulger to Kevin Curtis in front of D'Angelo Hall. Man, excellent protection by that Rams offensive line. The Falcons, that's what it was. You cannot give this off offense uh, this kind of time. Well, that's a big-time throw. He does get the protection, but Curtis is locked one-on-one. -on -one. D'Angelo Hall he gets away with a little push-off and then runs the sideline route, but a great throw from Bulger. They bring Sean McDonald in the ball game at back, and now they flank him to the left side with two other receivers. Steven Jackson is the running back. Here's McDonald breaking away to the near side. First down, give is to Jackson, and that's going nowhere. Kearney's got him for a loss. Back to the 46-yard line. Try to run a draw with Steven Jackson. Good job by Patrick Kearney redirecting his feet. And what I mean by redirecting, you just go back, follow your steps when you realize that they're going to run the play. And Excellent job by Pat, the Pro Bowler. Hey, by the way, Dunn's 62-yard touchdown runs the longest run in Falcons playoff history. Vic's run earlier in the ball game is the second longest run. Say goodnight to Jamal Anderson's 34-yard run in 98 as the longest postseason run in Falcons history. Sorry about that, Jamal. <laughs> second and a dozen at the 46 for the Rams. Here's Bulger dropping back. The red shirts are closing down. He'll throw off the pad of Holt. Incomplete, and Bulger didn't have much time. Hall there in coverage, D'Angelo Hall for Atlanta. Bulger couldn't wait around because Big 75 was barreling down with Ed Jasper. How about that matchup, guys? D. Hall locked on Torrey Holt one on one. Nice tight coverage by Whoa, nice knock up, knocking them off his route. D'Angelo Hall got the hands of steel pushing Torrey Holt off his route. Wow, nice punch. Crowd of 71,000 on their feet at the Georgia Dome. Waving the white towels. Bulger, shotgun with Steven Jackson to his left. Atlanta with a five-man front. Snap to Bulger, here come the red shirts. He'll set, throw down the middle. Bobbled and caught by Holt. First down at the Falcon 40. Torrey Holt, a 14-yard catch, converts the Rams' second third down in the drive. Tackle made on the play by D'Angelo Hall. And Holt whose self-proclaimed nickname is Big Game, catches his first ball of the night. He had six catches, 108 yards, and a touchdown at Seattle last week. Nice throw by Bulger, zipping it in there. He gets hit again, though. First and 10 at the 40. Cam Cleland out of the fullback spot to a tight end at the right. Manu Maliuma is also in the other tight end. Play action, here's Bulger setting to throw, being pressured. He'll come around the corner and be brought down Back at the 41 42 yard line. And that one is Travis Hall. Nine year veteran from nine year veteran from BYU. It's a good job by the secondary Falcons. That time Keith Brooking got real deep in the zone. There was no way for Curtis. He was dropped back. He was looking at Curtis, but Brooking did a good job getting back deep. Well, good. he doesn't he doesn't find his check down. Yeah. Steven Jackson's wide open underneath, and he's so caught up in throwing the ball vertically that he could have dropped it off for Jackson for a big gainer. Curtis and Hall will go to the right. Good speed has come back in the ball game alongside Jackson. They're split behind Mark Bulger. Here's Curtis in motion. Give will be to Jackson sweeping back here to the near side. Come on, guys. That ain't going anywhere. Brooking read that like he heard it called in the huddle. And it's another loss of a yard back to the 43. Keith Brooking, 144 total tackles through the regular season, gets his first stop of the night. Well, the initial part of the play is blown up because Kevin Mathis comes on a corner blitz. He eats up the pulling guard, nice. and now it allows Brooking to flow, scrape, and make the play. Remember I said this, Steven Jackson's carrying the ball like a rookie. They're going to strip him eventually if he keeps carrying the rock like that. Third and 13 at the Falcon 43. Remember, St. Louis has converted two third downs, one third and six, and another third and 12 already in the drive. Shotgun for Bulger with four receivers. Sets, throws down the seam, and it's overshot of Torrey holding complete. They made him throw it quick, didn't they, Arch? Yeah, they got after him a little bit, but that's the kind of throw. He's an on-time rhythm passer, and he's going to throw it in a hole. 
But because he let it go a little bit early, Torrey Holt was not where he needed to be. And those are the kind of balls you normally get picked off. Ten not plays, and here's uh, Kevin Stemke to uh, punt for the first time. Only his eighth game as a Ram. He was signed uh, prior to Thanksgiving. Last week, three punts, 29-yard average at Seattle. Snap, and they almost got that one. Wobbly kick. It'll hit and take a bounce. Rossum got away from it. Oh, and he came from the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. What a boneheaded play. Kevin Garrett was in the end zone, came back into the field of play and touched it, and that'll send it to the 20. Falcons may be fortunate there, huh? Yeah, real fortunate. That's the play that, as a special teamer, you talk about that anytime you work in a punt team. But unbelievable. Good play for the Falcons, though. Brian Finneran came within a whisker of blocking it, by the way. I like the Falcons' aggressiveness right now to West. The Falcons have realized that, you're, you know what I'm saying, you lose, you go home. It's just a one-game playoff here. Atlanta starts for their third offensive possession from their 20. Now looking back at that play, Garrett's the gunner on the punt team, comes down for the Rams, does a good job of getting his back to the goal line, waiting for the ball to come to him, but lost where his feet were on the field. And if once you go in the end zone, you can't be the first guy to touch it. 14-7 Atlanta, 3-16 to play in the first period. Michael Vick is thrown for one. Warwick Dunn's run for one. Here's Crumpler in motion. Eye formation. First down give is Dunn. Left side, and he'll dig out about three to the 23. And he got pushed back from there. Once again, nobody home on the bootleg. Nobody home. Good job by the Rams on that time playing the run. Stack. That time they didn't come up with the nine, but they still had him in position. Damian Lewis creates that play for the linebacker to make that tackle. Well, in week two, they were horrible defending the bootleg, and then they have not shown me anything that they're defending against it so far. Apparently they met discussing other topics. 244 to play. Vic out of a shotgun now in motion, and Dunn is the quarterback. Snap to Warwick. Throws in the flat. Here's Michael cutting back, and he'll be tackled from behind by Thomas at the 24. So Dunn that time through to Vic out in the flat. Falcons got but a yard out of it as they scrambled Vic from under quarter uh, out of the shotgun in, uh, into the flat here at the near side and then Dunn through the pass for a yard. The play was set up. It was a screen to Vic in the flat, but the throw was behind him, so it made Vic wait and it allowed Tino Samoa to come over and make the play. I like the idea, though, Archer. 2:02 to let's, go first quarter. Let your players make plays. Third and six at the 24. Snap to Vic and his shotgun. Atlanta on third down. Back across the middle. That's Veteran, and that's a first down at the 31. The yeah. sure hands of the former Villanova Wildcat convert the first Real down. good read by Finneran to get in between the backers in the zone coverage, and Vic popped him with the ball as soon as he turned around. It's a good job by Mike Vic. Remember, the last play, a little winded. But you got to remember, every play counts in the playoffs. Nice job by Vic. Atlanta 2 of 2 on third down. Tommy Polly, Archuleta make the stop for the Rams. It's 14 7 Atlanta. We're in the final 90 seconds of the opening quarter. Vic, word of instruction with a hand signal at the line. Here's the give to Dunn. He'll shoot off the left side. 40, cuts it outside. 45, midfield, knocked out of bounds by Antoine Edwards in Ram territory to 49. It's a 21-yard run. I'm going to say it again. Fred McCrary, this boy, we got to come up with a nickname for him. We got the sledgehammer. Great job on piece of Tisha Amosa. Great <laughs> block again. I'm telling you, man, this, uh, McCrary well, right now is like a, a just cleaning house back what there. What happens on a play, it starts with Michael Vick, and Michael changes the side the play's going to go to. He reads Adam Archuleta coming down to support. He flops the play to the other side. McCrary gets the block, and Dunn's off and running. Dunn's got his fifth 100-yard game before the end of the first quarter. Already. 106 on six carries, and the sledgehammer's coming to game. T.J. Duckett, first and 10 at the Rams, 48. After the 21-yard run, play action by Vick. He'll step away from the pressure to the left side, turn it upfield. 45, diving inside the 40 to the Ram, 39. The ball was down before the tackle was made by Archuleta and Ryan Pickett. It's a nine-yard run as we come toward the end of the opening quarter of play. Hey, Mike Vick saw that seam there, Wes, and took it. That's the difference between the regular season and now. Mike might have looked for his receivers in. Any yards are important here. Good job by Mike taking off around that left side, man. You think he would look for his receivers in the regular season? <laughs> nah, he'd have run it. <laughs> 
Good point. He good point. It. You're but right. But you're right. He hit, hit it. He you're right. Think about the receivers. He saw first down. He took that thing. First <laughs> quarter in the books. Atlanta 14 and St. Louis 7. Our coverage from the big dome. You guys, I want to let the quarterback. I know he loves big numbers. You got to give give I'll, our listeners these Falcon numbers after the first quarter. He's unbelievable. Well, Chuck, it jumps right out at you. 162 <laughs> yards rushing in the first quarter. 25 for the Rams. Already 192 yards of offense for the Falcons. 115 for St. Louis. Not bad. But hey, you got to slow number seven down before you get the ball back. First play of the second quarter is second and one just inside the St. Louis 40 yard line. Atlanta leading the Rams by a 14 7 count. First down give is TJ Duckett, and he will have, I think, the first down. No, he's going to be short. Going to be short. Things stacked up on the right side. Ryan Pickett led the way. Like he had I want to, uh, while well, well, we've got I, a moment here. I wanted that play action deep right there. I didn't uh, get the call in in time. No, just, evidently. Just, just salivating. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to welcome WJFK Radio from our nation's capital on board tonight for our broadcast. All right. They are the uh, flagship station of the Washington Redskins, home of Larry Michael, Sam Huff, and Sonny Jurgensen. Great team. And those up there in our nation's capital finally remember the days of David Archer, quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think Sonny's got a big stogie in his mouth right now, do you? <laughs> I think there's a chance. They'll measure here, but the uh, Falcons do not have Terry McCauley's crew, fortunately, is not uh, officiating in Pittsburgh. They have the spot right, unlike yeah. earlier today where a spot wow. was granted in that ball game that was shocking, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, This Falcons offensive line, what, just watch the surge, Wes. They are on the other side of the line of scrimmage every play. It is third and about a step at the 39. And I didn't like the way that one unfolded. Vic diving behind center and guard, but this end looks like it's close, man. Is he going to have it? TJ Duckett says he does. If so, Atlanta will be three for three on third down. Michael came out of there and took his helmet off. Uh oh. Yeah. They're going to ask for measurement, and he didn't get it, by the way. No. Go for it. Yeah, he's got it. Close. You, you think? think he's got it? No, no I don't. He didn't get it. It's close. I can't tell. Nope. Hey, Quarterback sneak again. Oh. You got to sneak it again. Three links of the chain. Sneak it again. Give it to the sledgehammer. Michael needs to not dive head into the ground, though. No, he needs to stay forward and keep them legs driving. <laughs> Don't give it to Sledge. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There's nothing, there's not a play on the planet that a quarterback would rather run least than a quarterback sneak. Right. Really? Oh, are you kidding me? Man, he's got, got a half an inch, All man. those guys out there trying to shorten your neck, and all you're doing is exposing it to him. Well, Mike exposes his. I want to give it to that 260-pounder behind me. Nah, give it to Mike. Just fall forward against this little line. Come on. McCurry and duck it in the eye. Both tight ends to the right side, and here is Crumpler in motion. Vic's going to give it to Duckett, and TJ's got it, and more. Oh, the hammer! Digging him out inside the 35 and 34. What? Archer, Archer called it. Give it to the sledgehammer. Robert Thomas hit him at the point, and TJ Duckett hey. took Robert Thomas and two or three other white shirts with him inside the 35 to the 34. It's a gain of five and a first down. Riding on the Duckett Railroad. <laughs> At him. I like how Algie's helping him. Look, <laughs> Algernon Crumpler just keeps pushing and fighting. This team is scrapping today, man. 14 7 Atlanta. We're early stages of quarter two here at the Georgia Dome. Falcons moving toward the east end of this facility that hosted second NFL playoff game here tonight. Backfield split. In motion comes Crumpler to the right side. Here's Vic. A little counter with Duckett and TJ, and a marker is thrown. And now we got. Play off the ball with Bryce Fisher taking a shot at Michael Vick after the handoff. And a marker was thrown shortly after that. Wow, that should have been a personal foul, man. Unnecessary roughness. Yeah, that's ridiculous. He took a shot at Vick, no question about it. Mike's got to keep his head on the swivel, though, Dave, because, you know, they realize they take Mike out, the game changes. Jim Mora, headset off, and wants to talk with somebody. Uh-oh, here come Peerless Price talking. They, they, that's what I'm saying. Back your quarterback up. Holding offense, number 64, 10-yard penalty, first down. Wow, the holding call against Atlanta. 
as against Todd Weiner and Morris. You know what happens is the referee quits while he starts Correction. watching the play. That was on number 63. Oh, it's on Garza. You know, Hargrove flyer is it Fisher? Fisher. Yeah, Fisher. Bryce Fisher takes a clean and shot you, at Vic. And the D-line coach was my former coach, Bill Koloff, for eight years in Atlanta. We used to do that. We try go. to take a quarterback out to change the game around. Uh-oh. White will go to the right. Price here to the left. First and 20 after the holding call against Atlanta. Just inside the Rams, 45. Vic on a straight drop. Pocket giving away. Michael now dances from it. He'll keep it at the 40. Be brought down from behind by Leonard Little at the 37-yard line. It's a gain of seven. It'll be second down and 13. Uh, too much pressure by Ryan Pickett. Got a nice bull rush on Kenny Forney and Todd McClure getting back there. That was a nice bull rush. Big Jimmy Kennedy, actually. Well, Jimmy Kennedy's been playing awfully well inside, and that's why Hargrove and Little have been making stats as of late, too, for the Rams. 12-35 and counting first half. It's 14-7 Atlanta. Tenth play of the drive coming up. The Falcons have scored on their previous two possessions of the football. Yeah, Ryan Pickett was MVP last week in that game. Three receivers here to the right. Now Fennerin comes in motion to the left. Vick and a shotgun with Dunn flanked to his left. Rams rush four. Vick flips it out in the flat. This is Dunn eluding the first man. Cuts it back inside. He'll be brought down at the 34, 33 and a half yard line by Little and Pickett. It's a gain of... About four on the play, three and a half. It'll be third down and ten. Good idea there, Greg Knapp. Saw that the Rams had picked up the pace a little bit with their pass rush, trying to get him to come after the quarterback even harder and dump the screen off. Real good job of the Rams rallying and making the play for just a two-yard pickup. That looked like it hurt, man. That was a <laughs> nice hit. Woo. Nice hit. Michael Jenkins is in. The rookie from Ohio State to the right with Fennerin in a slot. Price here to the left. Vick and a shotgun. It's third and a full 10 for Atlanta. Michael drops back, steps up. He'll sail it. It's caught. Michael Jenkins, first down at the St. Louis 19-yard line. Jenkins, by the way, had six of his seven receptions in the last five games and a big 15-yard catch right there in a first down. Well, there's one of your answers to how the Rams are going to play the Falcons. They introduced a three-man front and drop eight into coverage, hoping that Michael or thinking that Michael couldn't beat him throwing the football. All he did was slide up in the pocket and stick it on Michael Jenkins. Atlanta four for four now on third down, three for three in the drive. I beg your pardon, they missed a, uh, a third down earlier. They're now three for four. They converted on fourth down. First down give, and this is done, and he'll get a yard maybe to the left side. Dropped at the 19, tackle made by Brian Howard, free agent from Idaho. Second down and nine. Well, you like the tempo. This is what Greg Knapp and Jim Moore talked about all week, having tempo on offense. This is what the Falcons are doing. You see them. They're getting to the line of scrimmage. Mike's making the right calls at the right time, and I like where they're headed, Dave. Yeah, they seem to be yeah. dictating the tempo. I yeah. agree with you, Chuck. Price will go to the left with White. McCrary and Dunn offset to the right side. Crumpler's the tight end on the right, and here's White in motion. Second down and nine. And the give will be to Dunn. Boy, McCrary, another great block. Dunn, 10, 5, touchdown Atlanta. Fred McCrary took Jeremetrius Butler, planted, seated, and watered him. Hold on, to hold, go on to the end zone. hold on, Wes. You got to christen him. Yeah, we came up with the sledgehammer. The boy is knocking heads off of the shoulders of the Rams today. Head knocker. Oh, um, we head knocker. Head knocker. Head knocker. Okay. Head knocker might we be pretty good. Him. You know who else got a good block Woo. on that is Algie Crumpler. And Crumpler talked so much about being a Pro Bowl tight end for his receiving skills. You don't run the football the way this team does without a tight end block. And Crumpler gets a good block on the defensive end. 9:58 to go in the first half. It's 20 to seven. Feelys. Point after is away and good. That's $100 for Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Compliments of Brony Paper Towels and the Kicking for Kids program. Dunn's got two rushing scores tonight, 11 on the season. It's a 13-play, 80-yard drive, and it's a clock cruncher. Eight minutes and 8.21 to Rams 7. Dunn's touchdown run of 19 yards gives Atlanta 199 yards of rushing oh, here in the man. first half. And they've already set the Falcon playoff record for rushing yards in a game, eclipsing the 192 at Green Bay from two years ago. Kick by Feely, handled by Kaysan at the three. 15, 20, and hit pretty good at about the 25 and get the number of Kerry Davis. 
in uniform tonight out of Illinois. He just flat blasted Kaysan at the 25 yard line. Timeout on the field, 9.51 to go before halftime. Stay tuned. Our coverage from the Georgia Dome continues. Atlanta by two touchdowns. We'll watch time from Bullard, the official timekeeper of our Falcons broadcast and available at It's About Time stores and a wall near you. Rams down 21 7 with the ball first and 10 at their 25. Bulger with good speed and Jackson behind him. Two receivers and a tight end give is to Steven Jackson trying to cut outside. He'll get the corner turned on Lavalle. And then Brian Scott hammers him at the 34. It'll be a gain of right at nine for Steven Jackson. Just an observation here, gentlemen. We have not seen Marshall Falk since the opening series of the ball game. Remember, he took that nasty hit on the five by D'Angelo Hall on the first run. <laughs> Don't know if he's uh, yeah, have, to check on, have to check on that. Good read by Steven Jackson. The Falcons are playing cover two, which is weak against the run. He slid to the outside with no support. Falcons go nickel on second and one. Three receivers for St. Louis. Here's Bulger giving to Jackson. Tried to cut it back inside. He's got the first down as he reaches the 39-yard line. Got hit pretty good by Kevin Mathis. Five-yard gain for Steven Jackson, first and 10. You know, the backside Falcons of this Falcons defense, Dave, is getting cut off. Right now, Brady Smith is on an island most of the time on that right side. They found a way to Rams. Figured that's why they keep bringing that fullback in, and that's confusing the Falcons right now. On yeah, the run. That, that time they ran a three yeah. wide receiver package. The yeah. Falcons went to their nickel group, which is weaker against the run, also. That was the fourth carry of the ball game for Jackson. He's got 11 yards. First and 10 at the 39. Now they swap Manu Maliuna and Curtis. Now they chase the tight end to the far side. They're going to give it to Jackson again. He'll stretch it to the far side. Cuts back at the 45, breaks midfield, and the Rams again creating some momentum on the ground with Steven Jackson rumbling 15 yards behind Orlando Pace, who got the block on Brady Smith. And, Chuck, you said earlier that's kind of reminiscent of what we saw the Chiefs do back in early October. Yeah, Brady Smith is the weak link on the run for the Falcons right now. Anywhere he lines up, you'll see the tight end line up on him, the audible and running at his side as he comes out right now. They put Travis Hall in to better run stuff. Ball of the Falcon, 46. Flop Patrick Purney over to Brady Smith's side. Two receivers here to the left, Holt. On the other side, here's a play action by Bulger. He'll throw back down the middle of the field beyond the reach of Curtis with D'Angelo Hall in coverage. That'll be incomplete second and 10. First pass attempt of the possession for the Rams. Stops the clock with 7.40 to go in the first half. And Atlanta leading St. Louis 21-7 here at the Big Dome. It's about the third throw I've seen from Bulger. It's been a little too tall. Uh, Torrey Holt made a real nice catch for him on third down to convert, but that's the third time he's gotten it up a little high for the receiver to be able to come down with it. Bulger now, three out of seven for 92 yards. Curtis here to the right, Holt to the left. Stewart crawls up on the edge. He'll give it to Steven Jackson, tries to cut back, and he'll get to the 45 for a gain of one. Travis Hall makes the stop. They brought Matt Stewart up there on the edge, Chuck, and yeah. it created a little bit of indecision for the rookie from Oregon State. And, and it was Travis Hall knocking the tight end in the backfield and making Steven Jackson have to make an early decision. Chuck, that might be a substitution. You see that substitution happening yeah. where Travis comes in on rundowns and Brady in on, on pass downs. And, and the Falcons are going to go far in the playoffs and stop the run. Travis Hall is going to need to be out there. Brady needs to be a situational pass rusher. The Rams are 2 of 3 on third down. Looker and Curtis to the far side. Hold here to the right. Tight end to the left and Jackson the lone setback. Bulger looking to throw. Drops back, sets, throws, caught Curtis at the 32. Makes a move, tries to cut back. He'll be brought down by Rod Coleman downfield at the with Jason Webster at the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 15 and a first down. Well, they double-teamed Patrick Kearney on the left side. Brady Smith, he just got stopped by Orlando Pace. They're doing a good job protecting. I mean, yeah, they, they kept the tight end yeah. over on Brady's side, oh, they too. Kept so two they tight both, ends. both okay. guys got double-teamed that time, yeah. and so they had... What, seven guys blocking four? Actually, it was a double-double. Yeah, it was pretty much a double-double-double. Three catches, 93 yards, and a score for Curtis in the game. Here's Bulger on first and ten. Here's Marshall Falk back in the contest. And he'll dig out a couple of yards to the left side. So it'll be second and eight as Jasper makes the stop on the veteran Marshall Falk. 
You see the sense of urgency in the St. Louis Rams right now, realizing that their de defense isn't doing anything and that they're going to have to score points if they have any chance of winning today. Well, good job by Mike March, too, of keeping the run game part of the mix because that keeps the play-action pass available for Mark Bolger. Eighth play of the drive as Holt goes to the left. Curtis, who's had a big role here early, to the right. Both tight ends in the formation. The lone setback is Marshall Falk on second and eight. Bolger from under center looking to throw. Pumps. Now he'll throw for the end zone. Torrey Holtz there, and it's caught. Touchdown St. Louis and Torrey Holtz in the end zone for the first time tonight on a 28-yard pass from Mark Bolger. Well, it's a tremendous route by Torrey Holt, and because of the protection, Bolger was able to pump fake the post route. Corey Hall bit on the post route, and back to the corner goes Torrey Holt, and the ball is perfectly thrown. So Torrey Holt, who caught a touchdown last week at Seattle's, now got 12 on the year. And Bulger's thrown scoring passes of 57 and now 28 in the ball game. Snap, spot, tries away from Wilkins, and it is good. Timeout on the field. 5.26 to go in the first half. They're 35 combined points. 21-14 Falcons has more brand Falcons. names at lower prices every day as well as more knowledgeable people, people to make sure you get the right part the first time. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts at better prices every day. Torrey Holtz from Gibsonville, North Carolina. That town's not as big as this building. <laughs> he oh, is, though. Oh, I like man. him. Yeah, he's nice, isn't he? Not many guys proclaim themselves big game and are able to back it up, right? Got that right. Wilkins end over end kick. Rossum crowded in low. Plays from the five. Cuts back 25, 30, 35 yard line for Allen Rossum, and they went right up the wedge. Right straight back up the middle, 26 yards. Wilkins hung it up there, and my goodness, Rossum took it straight back up the seam. Atlanta will start from its 35. We get a timeout on the field here at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. 5-19 to play first half, 21-14. That kick return, by the way, is another $100 for the Falcons Youth Foundation from Safe Auto, 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. And our message is that that worked out today. today. Yes, it was. Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, Pretty good players way. on that floor. Woo. First and 10 at the 35 for Atlanta. Warwick Dunn is in the backfield, or T.J. Duckett's in the backfield and place of Warwick Dunn as the drive begins. 21-14, Vic on play action. Throws back. It's caught by Peerless Price. First catch of the night. He'll make a move across the 40 to the 41. Knocked out of bounds by Tino E. Samoa. Nice job by Mike Vick. Good call by Greg Knapp. We talked about that earlier. Coming back with the bootleg. Good job getting Peerless Price in the game. Short pass, but a nice gain on first down. Yeah, Seven yards to defending. the 42. They're not defending it, and no. uh, it's going to burn them. Clock moves under five minutes to play first quarter. 21-7 Atlanta, or 21-14 Atlanta after the Rams scored a moment ago on the 28-yard strike from Bulger to Torrey Holt. Here's White in motion. And the give is Duckett. TJ 50 into Rams territory to the St. Louis 45-yard line. Antoine Edwards got the license plate and tripped him up. <laughs> I just feel bad for the Rams, man. I mean. This is the ultimate running game. You got to give a lot of credit to Alex Gibbs. Good job. They keep, when I told you earlier, you keep putting your defensive ends out wide. You're gonna run. They're gonna run inside of them. I mean, bad game. I mean, Larry Marmy. I mean, just just t take I've the Rams seen, off the field. Just let us run for a touchdown. I've never seen a team at this Crazy. league be able to run against an eight-man nine front like uh, Bush league, like this man. team does. Yeah. Price and White to the right. Crumpler here to the left. McCrary and Duckett stay in the game. It was a 13-yard run to the 45 of St. Louis. Here's Vic giving to Duckett again off the right side out to about the 41 or down to about the 41 I should say. Bryce Fisher from the Air Force Academy. Jimmy Kennedy from Penn State make the stop. Let's call it a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Dave, I call this a classic group of underachievers. Five of the Rams seven front seven guys were first or second rounders. So these guys are apparently not playing up to potential. So it'll be second down and six at the 41, or outside the 41. Beverly and Crumpler, the two tight ends. Algae in motion now to the left, where Fennerin is wide to that side. Here's the give. This is Duckett, 35. TJ slipped up and will be brought down at the 28-yard line. He hit the deck. 
The turf monster got him. Yep. 13 yard run for TJ Duckett. Oh, he's kicking himself right now. I didn't know if he was down. I'm glad that they called it dead because that could have turned ugly. You see the Rams player picked it up, but I mean, what can you say about this offensive line, man? Look, I mean, this is a line that's completely mashed everybody this year. No one made the Pro Bowl. Wow. Inside zone run play by the Falcons. Todd McClure, Roberto Garza, Keenan Forty, road grading the Rams yeah, defensive line. Eric Beverly, too, Chuck, on the backside, sealing it. 225 yards of rushing for Atlanta here in the first half. 240 to go in it, and the Falcons up a touchdown. Here's Vic. Play action, being flushed. Michael looks. Now he's going to loop it and out of bounds. He got it past the line of scrimmage. It'll be ruled incomplete. Algie Crumpler was the closest guy there. Archuleta had rolled back over for the Rams in coverage. Well, Archuleta took everything off of Algie Crumpler except his jock. <laughs> I mean, he completely he undressed him. Did he? And that's who Vic wanted on the play action. Crumpler on the deep corner route. Archuleta completely locked him up. Crumpler was complaining to the referee. Good decision by Vic. Throw the football away. Keep yourself in a good situation. Second down and 10. Ball at the 29 of St. Louis. It's 21-7 Atlanta with two and a half minutes to play in the opening frame. Crumpler in motion to the boundary side at the right, and we got some motion, I believe, uh, Beverly. on Eric Beverly. Ball start. Yeah. Offense, number 80. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Second down and 15. Ball will be pushed back to the Rams 34-yard line. On our way to a 300-yard rushing day, uh, imagine this. The last five games, the Rams have been averaging giving up 114 on the ground. 269 total. Chuck, they gave that up in two possessions tonight. Oh, man. Well, this is a situation for Mike. He can't get too greedy now. You take what they give you. Just get yourself in a good third down situation. Right. Second and long and 15 at the 34. Vic brings Crumpler here to the near side. And Michael will step up in the pocket. He's going to tuck it and run. 30, needs a block, got it at the corner, and he fell down. The ball popped loose, and St. Louis has recovered. Fumble. The Rams come up with it. Tommy Polly, the former Florida State Seminole, came up with the turnover. Vic almost had the first down. Polly's got it. And St. Louis takes over after an Atlanta turnover with 2.19 to play here in the first half. I'll tell you, you know what this is, guys? We saw we saw Duckett do the same thing. What this is are legs that aren't used to being at game speed. You sit out a week, you sit out three weeks or something, don't play. Michael trips over his own feet here. Same thing happened to T.J. Duckett. What it is is the legs just aren't used to playing at this speed. They're not up to speed yet. Vic was down, but the ball came loose, and nobody had touched him. He came down, the ball hit the ground, but nobody touched him, so therefore he was still alive. Fumble. Yep. So it's six plays and a fumble. First turnover of the ball game is from Atlanta. St. Louis takes over, and this crowd at the Dome has got to help rally the defense. It's been dazed early. Here's the give to Steven Jackson. That goes nowhere. Kearney has had about enough of all this business, hasn't he? Trying to stretch Steven Jackson outside. Good job by Patrick Kearney whooping the offensive tackle. Blaine Sapia and getting off on the ball. Good job by Pat, man. Two-minute warning here at the Dome. 21-14, Atlanta with a touchdown advantage. Bob with three Back timeouts. Our game time, 9.33, Saturday evening here at the Georgia Dome. Bull of a watch time from the official timekeeper of the Falcons radio network available at It's About Time stores in a mall near you. Now it's back on the Falcon defense and... The 12th man of some 70-some thousand here at the Dome tonight, guys. Yeah, it's time for them to stand up. This defense, got, they got to bow their necks. Got to make a play. Got to hold their end up. Second and 11 at the Rams, 17. Patrick Kearney trying to get that east end zone to its feet. Mark Bulger, 5 of 9, 135, two touchdowns. And he'll drop the throw. Looks left, shoots it out there. That's caught by Curtis. And he will stretch out just shy of the 28. Or beg your pardon, that's Dane Looker, 89 rather than 83 Curtis. Both of them about six foot tall, 180, 190 pounds. Curtis went to Utah State. Looker went to Washington. It's a 10-yard game. Curtis was MVP last week against Seattle, four for 107. Third and a yard for the first down. And they will give it to Jackson, trying the left side. Steven Jackson burrowed back, still on his feet. He didn't get it. Let's call a timeout right here. Atlanta will call the timeout on third and short. 
And it stops the clock with 117 to play. Kearney, the first guy. Jasper finally took him to the turf. Catch Falcon Vision 24 hours a day exclusively on Comcast Channel 119. Get $400 to ditch the dish. Call 404 Comcast. Dave, no north south there. Jackson made the rookie mistake of trying to go east west. Well, I think the Falcons did a great job, Wes, of cutting him off. I don't think he really had an ability to get north south. And once he found a crease, they knocked his feet out from underneath him. Now, I can't believe they're even considering. Uh, there's no way. Bulger's off the field now. Gotta remember okay. who's on the other side. I mean, come now. on now. But the good thing is, a minute 12 is enough time for us to get in field goal range with Mike Vicker. Allen Ross would be a great time, like you always say, Wes. Uh oh. Uh oh, yeah. D'Angelo and Allen Rossum going deep with Michael Jenkins. Yeah, now, be go. careful here now. You're a little undermanned. There's three men deep. You're undermanned if they decide they want to try to run the football for this yard. Some trickeration, perhaps, David? Could be in the offing. Stemke. I, I'd be surprised. First putt of the night was 43. It was nearly blocked. Remember that. Three guys deep. They'll snap it to him, and he punts. Wobbly kick to the far side. It'll be Rossum. They'll huddle up. Rossum fakes the throw. He'll cut it back upfield, 45-50. Rossum, 45-40, 35-30, 25-20, 10-5. Touchdown, Atlanta. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it worked. We saw it in practice all week. Hey, huh? Joe DeCamillis, you're a genius. 67 yards, punt return for Rossi, his second of the year. And how about the genius of the coach? They <laughs> ran the play just a couple of weeks ago where they threw the ball to D'Angelo Hall, so you know the Rams had to prepare for it, and boom, Rossi goes to the house. Jay Feely to add the point after with 59 seconds left. Kick is away and it's good. Woo! It is a 68-yard punt return for a score by Allen Rossum. Stay tuned, fall in the game for the singular wireless call of the game. It might be that one. <laughs> the singular, the new singular raising the bar. Hey man, D'Angelo Hall, you see the fear in the Rams. They realize the guy's a playmaker, Dave. We saw Joe DeCamilla's been working on this. They work on all kinds of and the man, classic part of it play, is they paraded him out there. It yeah. wasn't any secret they ran on the field. They're running out on the field waving their arms around. So you know that the Rams special teams units knew, hey, wait a minute. This is the play we practiced against. This is where they throw it to D'Angelo Hall. But what at speed, what explosion, what vision where D'Angelo Hall takes off lightning in a bottle, explodes, and shakes up the Georgia Dome. First punt return for a touchdown in Falcon history. You got to execute, but give Joe DiCamillis a lot of credit. He spends so much. I've never seen a team that spends as much time on special teams as the Atlanta Falcons do. Oh, my goodness. History is changing as we see it right now, folks. Let me tell you, it's new Falcon era, man. Oh, Joe D. Now Feely to kick it away. And every time you think the Rams are building back a little momentum, the old red shirts just kick them back to the curb. Here's a drive deep. Kaysan will drop back. Touch a left knee. First and 10 at the 20 for St. Louis. Good job by Feely. Big kick there. Introducing Delta Simply Fares. Now everyday fares up to 50% lower. To find out more, go to delta.com slash simple fares. Very nice. Yeah, like that. That's a new one's good. I like how you kind of got up and down with it too. Like it's that. Nice. Yeah. 28 14. Hype, I'm hyped today. This crowd <laughs> is on its feet, just ready to just blow this building roof off of here, Wes. Falcons lead by two scores. Mark Bulger's got 59 seconds to make a little noise. Well, though. and here is, is a Ram. You want to make a play, yet you don't want to blow yourself out of the football game, too. Bulger will go shotgun. Looker and Curtis near side. Holton McDonald far side. He'll throw underneath. McDonald will step out of bounds. He'll have the first down at the 30. Sean McDonald, a former Sun Devil from Arizona State, now in his second season with the Rams and his first catch of the night is 10 yards. Well, what you got to look out for here, remember Mike Martz, they're going to take a shot downfield at some point. Don't let anybody get behind you. Stay deep as the deepest man. That's the Falcons' philosophy here. Holt and McDonald will go to the left. Atlanta's got a nickel defensively. 
Looker and Curtis here to the near side. Falk is the setback. Here's Bulger looking to throw. He'll air it out here to the left side and sailed it into the Falcon bench area. Intended for Dane Looker with Mathis stride for stride. It'll be second down and 10. Pace got away with a hold on Travis Hall. Yeah, Travis ate him up anyway. It's nice to see Travis Hall, the veteran of the group, the old man making plays. He's the only guy from the 98 team, and I like him stepping up and making plays today. 47 seconds left to go in the first half. 28-14 in favor of the Falcons. Bulger this time will go from under center. Marshall Falk is the lone setback. Four receivers. Holt the only receiver to the left. Drops back. Here comes Coleman. They'll dump it out in the flat to Falk. He'll cut it back 30, 35, and tripped up at the 37. St. Louis might burn a timeout here. And they do with 33 seconds, 32 seconds left. And Terry McCauley's going to look for some more time, I think, to go back on the clock. St. Louis, it will be a 30-second timeout. Please put 32 seconds on the game clock. 32 seconds. Two more seconds added back to the game clock. Real good job that time by DeMario Williams. What they, the Rams did was they put three wide receivers to the right and tried to lure the Falcons into rolling their coverage that direction. They screened back to Falk the other way, but DeMario Williams does a good job staying that side, turning it back inside, and Brookie is able to get over there. That was also a good hustle by that Falcons D-line. You see your man Ed Catfish Jasper, you know, missed, what, five games. Do a good job of hustling downfield. It's going to take a lot of players rallying to the ball to slow down this Rams offense. Think about it. Jasper hadn't played since, what, December 5th at Tampa yeah. Bay? Yeah. think that's right, isn't it? I yep. think so, yeah. Got and Crumpler's not played since December 18th against the Panthers. Two guys coming back after a long layoff tonight. Third and three at the 37 for St. Louis. 28-14 Atlanta with 32 seconds to go in the first half. Bulger from under center. Pace moved early, marker thrown. Big fella, former Buckeye at 6'7", 325, an all-world coming from Columbus. False start, offense. Number 24, Number Wes. 24 false uh, starts at the dome. Yep. Real good job that time by the Falcons secondary sorting, sorting out the window dressing by Mike Martz's offense. A lot of shifts, pre-snap motion, yet you could see the guys talking. D'Angelo Hall talking to Kevin Mathis, the nickelback. They sorted it out and were in right coverage before the ball was snapped. Bulger going to mess around and make a mistake and somebody going to take it to the house. Rams are three of five on third down. This is third and eight at the 32. Crowd to its feet, and it's loud tonight. Here's Bulger dropping back. Throws out here looking for Curtis. Caught. He'll step out of bounds at the 43. It's a gain of 11 and a first down. You know, Boy, Kevin Curtis is making some money, isn't he? Yeah, you're seeing, the, you're seeing the change in the guard, in my opinion. Isaac Bruce sitting out with that hip. Kevin Curtis last week had 104 against Seattle. He was the MVP. He's playing again like he's a top-notch quality player. He's got four catches for a buck four now in the first Woo! half. Tell you what, the design of the passing game is something to watch. March has really got something going. He stacks the receivers. One goes to the post, one goes to the corner, and Bolger shows where the defense is. Two receivers to either side. Shotgun for Bulger. First and 10 at the 43. 29 seconds to go first half. Bulger dropping back under pressure. He'll be hit. And it'll be ruled incomplete. Brady Smith brought the hammer on Mark Bulger, and he is a little shaken on the play. I'm going to tell you this. Brady Smith ate Orlando Pace's lunch the first time. He's eating his lunch again. Let me tell you, Pace has made six consecutive Pro Bowls. The only person to ever do that is the great Jackie Slater from the St. Louis Rams in that organization. Pace is a great player. There's always somebody out there that has your number, though. And if you went down and asked Mark Bulger if it hurt, he'd probably say, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, that hurt. <laughs> nice. Booyah. Nice Those hurt, hit. don't they, Archie? Yeah, but you don't <laughs> tell anybody. <laughs> 23 seconds left to go in the first half. 28-14. Here's Bulger from under center. Back stay in to help with the blocking. He'll shoot it out on the far side for Falk. And he's out of bounds at midfield. Stops the clock with 16 seconds left. It'll be third down and three on a seven-yard gain. Kevin Mathis shoved him out over there. Well, we talked about how good a tackler Kevin Mathis is. Not one of his more physical tackles, but does a good job of pushing Marshall Falk out of bounds shy of the first down. So it'll be third and three. Travis Hall will come in to spell Brady Smith for Atlanta in the defensive front. 
Antoine Lake. Falcons go nickel here. In motion is Curtis. Bulger drops back. He'll look for Curtis again. Caught. And he'll step out of bounds at the 41-yard line. On a third and three, Atlanta got confused. And Curtis again. David seems to be of almost the same pattern just about every time when they need about six or eight yards. And that time they got nine to Curtis. Yeah, they're stacking the receivers. One run straight up the field in the seam, which draws D'Angelo Hall back off of his corner spot. And then they run a guy in the flat. And that's Curtis. Now remember, Jeff Wilkins... One of the best in the business. Four for five this season, 50 yards beyond. His best, 53 against New Orleans in week three. His career best is 57. Nickel set again for Atlanta. Five receivers as Bulger drops the throw. Looks, flush from the pocket, and he'll be brought down at the 37. And the clock is stopped on a timeout by St. Louis with two seconds left. He's hurting right now. Yep, Bulger's hurt. Nice job by Travis Hall landing heavy on him. That's what we're taught to do by the St. Louis Rams defensive line coach, Bill Kolar. And he's down. Great job by Travis Hall. He's hurting right now. I'll tell you what, it's a good decision by Bulger. Now he's going to limp off the field. He's going to have halftime, and he's not even going to be able to get off the field. They're going to have to come and get him. Chris Chandler could be coming in the game. The wouldn't gets, that be a storyline to have see Chandler Jamie Martin first? You see Jamie Martin nah, first. But, I want to see Chris Chandler. Uh, Jamie <laughs> Martin and then the uh, affable Jeff Smoker before you saw Chandler tonight. Oh, I man, I want Chandler in. <laughs> but what Bulger did there, he realized that he needed to buy a couple more yards for Jeff Wilkins. And what his what he did there by gaining four yards, he may have put Wilkins in range where he could make a 55-yard kick. Travis Hall is making an impact on this first half. This is going to be right at 55, 56 yards for Wilkins. He was four for five on the year, 50 plus. 55 yards. Longest this season, 53 in week three against New Orleans. Center of the field. This one's got to be low, so you got a chance to block it. And now we get a timeout taken by Atlanta. Second. Joe DeCamillis wants to visit with his unit. Catch Falcon Vision 24 hours a day exclusively on Comcast Channel 119. Get $400 to ditch the dish. Call 404 Comcast, West. By the way, Wilkins has hit five straight and nine of his last ten. His last miss, 44 yards on Monday night against the Eagles at the Ed Jones Dome. Yeah. Um, he's been as good as, a, yep. as advertised. He's about as good as it gets. You talk about the... The, the kid up in New England, but this guy's right there with him. By the way, Wilkins won a national championship as a 1AA star at Youngstown State for current Ohio State head coach Jim Tressel. Well, you know, I played under Joe DeCamillis, and I was on this field goal block unit. What he likes to do, he likes to have the two tackles push the nose and try to slide a guy in there and get that hand up. Remember, Ed Jasper and these guys are really good at blocking field goals here with the Falcons. Sending Allen Rossum deep in case it's short. Get Allen a chance to return it. Wilkins out of the hold of Dane Looker. Snap spot. Kick is away, and it is good. And it had some juice. On the final play of the first half, Jeff Wilkins kicks a season best 55 yard field goal to make it 28 17 in favor of the Falcons. What a first half this has been, huh? How about that little four or five yard run Bulger's made? Ooh, that was big. That was big. That was big. Halftime at the Georgia Dome. Atlanta 28, St. Louis 14, seven possessions of the ball game oh, right here. Yes. I think you're right yes. on the head, Wes. I think this series of downs will dictate how the Rams feel about themselves here in the second half. Now, they're a resilient group. We saw that drive at the end of the first half to get a field goal, which I think was big. But this is a big, big drive in a game right here. Bulger, who threw for 285 here in September, threw for 188 in the first half. Actually, 190 on 11 of 17. And the ball fell off the tee as Feely got to it, so we'll have take two on the second half. Atlanta, 239 yards of rushing, 126 for Dunn, 79 for Michael Vick, who was 6 of 9, passing 51 yards in this first half. A play, Algie Crumpler, two catches for 22 yards. Jenkins, one for 14. Price, Spinner, and Dunn, and Vick all had a catch in the first half. Kevin Curtis, five catches, 113 yards, and a score. Torrey Holt, two catches, 42 yards, and a score for the Rams. Falk had six carries, 30 yards. Steven Jackson, eight for 26. And we're underway in the second half with Feely's high end over end kick. Kaysan a running catch, and the ball is loose. Fumbled around inside the 10, and they try and get back up. And it is 
Brandon Manu Maliuna, who is snowed under at the nine, and the Rams are lucky to have their hands on it. To there's, be a, there's an indication of how much they work on their special teams because as a as a wedge guy, you never go back to never. catch the football. Good point, Dave. The receiver's running up. Brandon Maliuna tries to run back. He runs right into Kaysen, and they averted a disaster here. But Kaysen needed to wave him off. Kaysen's not waving. That's a young mistake also, a young player mistake. He doesn't wave him off, Dave. Malamuna Muna. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. You know yeah. what? I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you over to like hey, Hawaii man. and let I'm you. I'm sorry. And I'm. I'm <laughs> Bulger with an eye behind him. Shake it off. <laughs> Shake Second it off. half goes from the ten. Slingshot out here in the flatness is Curtis trying to make a move and he got shoved out of bounds by D'Angelo Hall at the eleven with help from Matt Stewart. It's a gain of one. Yeah, you see, he's gonna be the go-to guy, but don't forget about Tory Hope. Good job by D'Angelo Hall. He is a short tackler doing a good job right Just now. Just an observation here. Isaac Bruce is out. A marvelous receiver with 89 catches, nearly 1,300 yards. Give Kevin Curtis a lot of credit. He has stepped right on up here tonight, Arch. He really has. I really like the way D'Angelo Hall plays the physical part of his game. We knew he could run and cover, but he's physical at the corner. Torrey Holt to the left. Jackson is the lone setback. Second down and nine. They'll give it to Steven Jackson, trying to cut back inside, got across the 15, and then Coleman knocked him down at the 17 with Matt Stewart. Gain a, a six, third, and three, Chuck. That was a counter OT. The Rams pulled two linemen. They pulled the, the backside guard and the frontside tackle. Good job by the Falcons staying home because that could have been a lot bigger, people on the backside, but he did gain eight. Let's keep an eye on Bulger, see if there are any residual effects of that beating he took late in the first half. Five of seven of the Rams on third down. It's third and three at the 17. Atlanta plays it straight. Two tight ends. Now Jackson out of the backfield in motion to the left. Bulger drops back, looks, throws, caught, drop Jackson. Oh, he had it and heard the pitter-patter steps of Kevin Mathis at the 20. It's three downs and out for the second time tonight for the St. Louis offense. I think you have to think yourself there if you're Mike March. You come up in a short yardage situation and get Jackson, the rookie, outside. Now, the design is okay, but still, why put a rookie up the bat in a conversion situation when Curtis and McDonald have been strong and, all day? And, and you got the greatest receiving running back in the history of the game in Marshall Falk on right. the sideline. Here's Stemke. Punting to Allen Rossum, who just raced one back 68 yards in the final minute of the first half. Oh, and he sails this one. Rossum crawling back. Will play from the 28-yard line. Did he kick it too far? We'll find out. Here's Rossum, 45-50. Rossum, 45-40. Cuts back 35 to the St. Louis, 33. Did he kick it too far? Yes, he did. Thank oh, you very much. And he kicked it to the wrong guy. They better start putting that ball out of bounds, man. Stop giving them opportunities. 54-yard punt. 39-yard return by Allen Rossum. Man, Allen Rossum should have got a trip to Hawaii. Pro Bowl, man. This guy's been phenomenal. That was Stemke's longest kick of the year right there. Ball at the St. Louis 32-yard line for Atlanta's opening possession of half number two. Well, we talked about the special teams being a factor, and Joe D's group is stepping up. High formation, McCrary and Dunn behind Michael Vick. Here's Crumpler coming in motion. He'll flop back to the wide side at the right. First down give is done. Shooting off the right side. He'll get three to the 30. Actually, two to the 30. They spotted the ball for play at the 32. Jimmy Kennedy makes the tackle on work done. It'll be second down and eight. I got a question for you, Chuck. You, Here's a there? situation where the Falcons come out. You made your adjustments or whatever you want to do at halftime to try to stop the run. If they come out and bloody your nose in the first drive, is that going to take your heart? It'll break you. It'll kill you. The Falcons sneak D'Angelo Hall out at fullback in front of Warwick Dunn. He'll come wide here to the left. Vic takes a look. Two receivers to the right. Michael throws. Out here in the flat is Hall. He'll make one man miss inside the 25 to the 24. Finally brought down by Antoine Edwards and Tino E. Samoa, the linebacker. It's a gain of six and a little slingshot to D'Angelo Hall, Arch. <laughs> I love it. D'Angelo sneaks into the huddle. Splits out on a shift, the pre-snap shift, and now if the corner was pressed up tight, he'd run the fade route, but he was off, so they'd run the little quick hitch to him, and boy, is he quick. He made, he made Butler miss. Yep. Jeremetrius Butler was reaching for air. He is one of the finest athletes I've ever laid eyes on, guys. Here's McCrary in motion. Play action to Dunn. Vick will boot back. Michael's going to keep it. He'll have the first down. Digging inside the 20-15. Ease is out of bounds. 
in front of Tino E. Samoa, the linebacker at the 10, and nobody home for the Rams, let me, David. Let me shake your hand, Archer. You've they, been calling that all game. <laughs> you're, you're the man. You're they, the man. They cannot defend it. They have not addressed it. They didn't address it in the first game, and they have not addressed it tonight. But check this out. Give Fred McCrary another, another A for effort. He runs the safety off. Adam Archer let us thinking he's out on the pass route. He keeps running. Nice job by McCurry again. Vic's got 94 yards on six carries. Warwick Dunn, 128 on nine, and it's first and goal at the Ram 10. Dunn stays in. Vic will hand him the football. Warwick to the right side, and whoa, a big white shirt came barreling through. Tommy Polly, that's Seminole on Seminole there. And Tommy will reach down and help Warwick up after a gain of about two to the eight. Well, Polly was one of the guys the Rams felt was going to make the difference in this game. He did not play the first game and really had a pretty good back half once he got back on the field. Had 101 tackles this season. Had a 14 tackle game last week against Seattle. Eric Beverly goes wide to the right. Fennerin goes in the slot. Crumpler is the tight end here to the left side. McCrary and Dunn behind Vic, who works from under center on second and goal. Michael fakes it, sets, throws. It's a shot right into Fennerin's hands at the six. And then he is shoved back by the combination of Dewan Gross and Antoine Edwards. It'll be a gain of just two, and it'll be third and goal. Threaded the needle on that one, put some zip, some heat behind that one. Nice hands by Brian Fennerin in protecting the ball, realizing he couldn't make any yards after the catch. I agree, Chuck. And he, he wanted to get Crumpler the ball on the corner route, but a good job of Tommy Pauly to stay with him. So... Like you said, good job by Fennerin securing the football. Falcons in the Ford drive zone with 10-22 to go quarter three, leading 28-17. Atlanta's two for two there tonight. Don the lone setback on third and goal at the six. Here's Vic dropping back. Michael looks left, throws, caught, touchdown. Peerless Price. How about that? That was really good. We said it before the game, they had to make some plays through the air day. Peerless Price is there. Algie Crumpler's caught one. Brian Finner's friends converted a great third down a couple of times. The Falcons right now are clicking on all cylinders, and that's another statement. Well, it's a plays. super job by Peerless Price. He had to get to the outside. He delayed just enough. Vic bought a little time to the outside and stuck it on him. Real good job by Peerless Price. Six plays, 32 yards. Challenge. And we're getting a challenge from the St. Louis bench. I'm not sure why. Well, I don't know if he got both feet down. He was right on the sideline. They're evidently getting some word upstairs to the Ram. St. Louis has challenged the ruling on the field that the pass was complete for a touchdown. Timeout. So 10.05 to play third quarter. And the 53-year-old native of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, has asked Terry McCauley and his crew to go under the booth here to have a look. We'll see. May not be a touchdown for Peerless Price. Good we'll shot. take a break. Back after these messages. He's got to wait on television before he can tell us. Now he can. After review, receiver controlled the football, got his left foot down, dragged his right foot inbounds. The result of the play is a touchdown. St. Louis is charged with their first team timeout. That's All that right, little Wes. drill that George Stewart does every day. Here you go, Wes. Here's my dollar. I owe you were right. <laughs> Wes <laughs> called it in the studio. Me and Dave thought it was overturned, but here, Wes, here's oh, your dollar. Oh, look at see? it. See? That is pretty. Huh? Sorry, you guys can't. If you don't get obviously, you Twinkle might not have toes. a monitor to see this, but it is pretty. Twinkle toes, man. It was like a ballerina. Folks. And they work on that every day in practice. George Stewart, the wide receiver coach, sends them through these little drills. The people thought probably think are nonsense, but <laughs> paid off right there. <laughs> Here's Feely for the point after to make it 35-17, and it is good. Time out on the field at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. That's $100 for Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Compliments of Brawny Paper Towels and the Kicking for Kids program. Record for most playoff points in franchise history in a single game. 35-17, now these messages. Appreciate your efforts as always here tonight. We're at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta with 10.05 to go in the third quarter. Atlanta has scored on a six-play 32-yard drive in 3.15, set up by the 57-yard punt return by Allen Rossum, who's had a wonderful night. Here's a high end over end kick, short side again by Feely. It'll hit. Kaysan will feel it on the bounce at the 10, 20, 25, and Sadiq Shabazz, or I beg your pardon, Kevin McAdam wraps him up. 
At the 27 28 yard line that's where the Rams get going. You know the Rams on offense are second in the NFC in time of possession around 31 minutes a game. The Falcons have had the ball so much. You know the Rams are used to controlling the clock but right now they're not able to do that. Now one thing the Rams do do yeah. is 64 passes of 20 yards or more during this season and they right. have three tonight. You can bet on the fact they're going to bring some more. Falk is into the ball game. Manu Maleuna the tight end crawls out to the left side. In motion comes Sean McDonald here to the near side. Bulger going to throw back. This is McDonald with blockers in front. Nicely done on a shoestring tackle. And that was Kevin Mathis at his specialty. And Mathis is slow to his feet but appears to be okay. Kind of walking off softly as it's a pickup of five to the 33. Wow. Kevin Mathis is the nickel defender in the slot. They throw the hitch pass to the outside with the big guys out in front. Sapia's got Mathis lined up. He sidesteps him. He's still he's going down now. He took a shot down around the knee or the ankle. Yep. Sapia clipped him but he played off the block and made the play. So Kevin Mathis goes down. Injury update brought to you by our friends at Piedmont Hospital with 928 to play here third quarter. And we get a timeout on the field. 35 17 Atlanta with the lead. Our coverage continues the after this local simply message. Fares. It's the end of the Saturday night's day. See how one airline is changing everything. To find out more, visit delta.com slash simply fares. 928 to play third quarter, 924 to play third quarter. 35 17, the Falcons lead. Aaron Bees, Allen Rossum has come in in the nickel to replace Mathis as Bulger goes to work on second and five. Straight drop back across the middle, and Curtis dropped it with Brooking on his tail incomplete. That's a good job. Nice trail technique by Keith Brooking, staying on his hip pocket, being in position to make that play. He heard the footsteps on that play. That's what you happened. Did? Yeah, I know he did. Okay. Brook was right on his butt. Curtis he... hadn't done much wrong tonight. That's yeah. really his first yeah. mistake. I know he dropped that one. Still need a little more pressure from the front, man. It'll help the secondary if they start putting a little more heat. Bulger 13 to 21, just under 200 yards yeah. and two scores. Yeah. No turnovers tonight for the Rams, who are minus 24 in the regular season. From under center, St. Louis 5 of 8 on third down. McDonald in motion to the left. Bulger backs up in the pocket. Pumps, throws, caught McDonald. Marker thrown as Russell shoves him out of bounds at the Ram 45 and a half yard line. Yeah, and Russell. it is against St. Louis. Yeah, Rossum got pushed off. Sean McDonald's working in the slot. Pass interference, offense, number 84. 10 yard penalty, hey. third down. Third and 15 back at the 23 after they step it off. Well, Sean McDonald's working in the slot against Allen Rossum. After coming in motion, Rossum's got an inside man coverage technique, and boy, he just got shoved away. Good job of Rossum getting back to make the play. So now the Rams really got to back it up. Third and 15 to go. That's where you see the dome field advantage rocking on these long yardage right. downs. Patrick Kern is yelling for the crowd to get him up. And they respond. Atlanta works in practice on defensive hand signals to offset their own crowd. 8.42 to play. Third quarter, Atlanta lead is 35-17. Bulger dropping straight back. Coleman chases him and sacks him back at the 12. Rod Coleman, 12 and a half sacks. And his first of the night is an 11-yard loss. It'll be fourth and 26. And the most dangerous man in the building tonight drops back to take the punt. And let me tell you what happened. The Rams thought they were going to run a stunt. They thought Rod was going to go up and Pat was going to come around. So the guard stays, sets, waits for Pat. Rod beats him quick. And his Bulger's right there. Smart veteran play. Great, great play by Kearney and Rod Coleman setting up that rush. Throw away the penalty arch. That's two straight three and outs for the Atlanta defense. Stemke two steps in the end zone. Lifts it out of there. Tight spiral coming to the near side. Rossum working from the 40. It's headed to the far side. Needs a block. Looking for the corner midfield. 45-40. 35-30. 25-20. And out of bounds goes Allen Rossum. Holy smokes. At the 14-yard line. And Kerry Davis. Got the corner turn with a block on Rich Cody. Yeah, the key block, though, is Brian Finneran. Finneran is the extra backpack waiting for the shorter kick. Finneran realizes that Mike Furry has beaten 
The guy that was blocking him down the field, and Finneran makes a huge block just as Rossum catches the ball. 46 yards on the return. Rossum has got 171 punt return yards tonight. Also, you got to credit Allen Rossum for taking his time setting up, realizing the wall was set up to the right side and being patient and hitting it. 7.56 to go. Third quarter, first and 10, operating their second possession of the half from the Ram 13. White in motion to the right. Vic from under center. Give is to Dunn, and Warwick will get three to the 10. And the clock continues to move with Atlanta leading 35-17 here at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. The world is finally getting a chance to see the Falcons are legit. They're more than just Michael Vick. Well, the numbers that say yeah. you're the number one special teams unit in the, in the NFL bears out because Rossum has had a monster night. You heard the number that Wes read. That's right. Offset out of the weak side. Price and White here to the left, and here's Dunn coming out of the backfield to the left. Here's Vic sprinting left from the pocket. Michael looking to get out of trouble and cannot. Leonard Little sacked him back at the 25-yard line, and the play never materialized. The former Tennessee Vol gets his eighth sack of the year. Should have threw that away. Well, what it is is it's a sprint to Mike's left. Yeah. He's got three receivers in a flood, and if nothing's there, he can pull up and throw it back to the backside to Crumpler, but he couldn't find Algie. Algie falls down, and he can't find him. He can't get him the football. Oh, yeah, Algie, Leonard Little came off the, that corner like a bat out of hell. Boy, Leonard Little. Woo. Michael Jenkins to the right, Fennerin and Price here to the left. Vick will play from his shotgun. It's third and 22. Atlanta can get a first down, but must get inside the Rams three. Snap to Vick. Again, he'll sprint. Hand on the counter, and this is done. Uh, and he runs back into Tino e. Samoa. The two-year veteran from Hawaii, and he's brought down at the 20. It's a gain of five. So on fourth and 17, Atlanta will ask Jay Feely to come on and try and cover the rest of this. Falcons are now five of seven on third down tonight. Feely on the year, by the way, 18 of 23. He made six of his last eight. He was nine of 11 here at the Georgia Dome. And this is going to be a 38-yard try. Chris Moore's hold. The kick is away, and it is good. Timeout on the field. 5.55 to play. The 38-yard field goal from Jay Feely. Makes it 38-17 in favor of Atlanta. And that field goal gives us another $100, $300 to Children's Health Care of Atlanta for Brawny Paper Towels and our Kicking for Kids program. And we'll step aside. A commercial Catch Falcon timeout. Vision 24 hours a day exclusively on Comcast Channel 119. Get $400 to Ditch to Ditch. Call 404. That's Comcast. Falcons tonight in the red zone are perfect. Four for four. They have scored tonight on five of six possessions and lead by 21. Here's the kick to Kaysan at the five. He cuts it back to the 20 and runs into his own man. And then the red shirts get there at the 21-22 yard line. And with 5.47 to play, we'll get another break in the action here at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. The Falcons 38 and the Rams 17. Our coverage from downtown continues after this local message. Third quarter at the Georgia Dome with David Archer, Chuck Smith. This is West Durham. 38-17, Atlanta leads. Allen Rossum now 152 punt return yards tonight. An NFL postseason record surpassing Anthony the Darter Carter, who had 143 in 1987 with the Minnesota Vikings. Bulger on first and 10 throwing, and McDonald cannot hang on on an inside slant route. Brooking chasing, and Brian Scott coming over to help out in coverage. Yeah, I got a little fortunate there. That's the third drop pass of this Ram core. Uh, two by the receivers and one by Steven Jackson. You know, interesting enough, hadn't called Torrey Holt's name that much lately. They're taking him out of the game. Now they just got to take Curtis and McDonald out of the game, but they keep dropping balls. I guess we have to worry about it. Second down and 10. Anytime you get to say Anthony the Darter Carter, I think it's good, don't yeah, you? handle it real good, yeah, it was oh, nice. Thank you. Second and 10 at the 21 for the Rams. Bulger with the incomplete pass, now 13 to 22. Play action, setting, dumps out in the flat, caught Manu Maliuna, the tight end, 30, 35, and out to about the 40. Goes the big fella from Arizona. 6'2 and 290 pounds, and he rumbles to the 39-yard line. It'll be an 18-yard gain and a first down. 
Creative play calling. Nice screen to the right. He lined up at fullback. Goes out there and makes a good play. Carries Bulger over 200 yards. He's been 300 or more five times this season. Manu Maliuna, by the way, that's only his 15th catch of the year. First and 10, 16th catch of the year at the Ram 39. Bulger dropping back. Sets now looking deep, and it is intercepted. And it is by Jason Webster. And it'll be his second interception of the year, and it's the first turnover of the night for the Rams at the Atlanta 15-yard line. He was looking deep. On the route, I think, for uh, Kevin Curtis, wasn't he, Arch? Yeah, he was on. He wanted the deep post route. And a good job by Jason Webster to stay deeper than the deepest man. What Chuck talked about that earlier. But it was a decision that Bolger made, a poor decision to try to make something happen. 16th interception of the year. Let's pause quickly for a timeout with the Webster. Falcons getting the ball back. And it gives Atlanta the ball. First and 10, and it's 13. 38-17 with 4.49 to go. Third quarter here at the Georgia Dome in a second half that has been dominated by the Atlanta Falcons on both sides. Not surprised to see one of the Falcon defenders intercept the pass. I witnessed one of the greatest practices I think I've ever seen in a 20-play script where your practice squad's throwing the ball. The Falcon defense intercepted 12 passes in a one-period setup in practice. It's the best I've ever seen a defensive back group catch the football. You gotta, well, gotta give a lot of credit out to Falcon to Brett Maxey. Young coach on the up, man. Brett Max is going to be great. Emmett yeah, Thomas. And Emmett Thomas. Great, great pair of coaches working double duty on those guys, man. Falcons make a late change, swing Beverly in and take Peerless Price out. You got to feel good for Jason Webster, a guy who has battled injuries off and on throughout the regular season to get a chance to make a statement here in the playoffs. Michael Vick from under center on first and 10 for Atlanta at its 13. Crumpler in motion. First down give will be to Dunn, circling to the outside and caught from behind by Jimmy Kennedy. Boy, I think Kennedy has played awfully well. Two-yard gain to the 15. It'll be second and eight. Big guy out of Penn State, man. Missed the first seven games of the season with a broken foot. Been coming on late. Had a real strong game last week against Seattle. Yeah, he had a big sack late yeah. in that football game that put uh, Matt Hassel back in a tough conversion situation in that final drive. Boy, a lot to like about Jimmy Kennedy, huh? 6'4", 320. He's a jumbo jet. But Atlanta, he's played well, but Atlanta still got 266 yards of rushing. And it's not a misprint. In motion comes Crumpler on second and eight. Vic looks to throw. Here comes the pressure. Michael eludes one man. There's a marker thrown. It'll be a hold. Vic is brought down back at the 16-yard line. But hold the phone. Pickett is the guy that made the tackle, but they're going to get Atlanta for a hold here. And Leonard Little is coming up that corner. Woo! St. Louis brought everybody they could get their hands on, it looked like. Mm. Vic got his hand mashed. He's shaking that off as he walks back toward the Atlanta. Holding home. offense, number 80, half the distance to the goal, second down. So it'll be second down and about 15 from the seven and a half. But did you see the veteran move? Beverly realized he was beat, Try to save his quarterback, keep him from taking a big hit. If you know your quarterback's yeah. in harm's way, hold him every time. I'll yep. tell you what, this, this uh, defense is primed for a little swing pass to Warwick Dunn out of the back. He'll hot read, dumping the ball. There's nobody there to cover it. Kind of like that little 60-yard flip they had to Justin Griffith in the first meeting. That would be nice. Single receivers either side, tight end to the right on second and very long. Vic from under center will give to Dunn, and he's going to nudge out for a couple to the nine. Tackle made by Ryan Pickett. It'll be third down and 13. Talked to Bill Kolar, their defensive line. He said Ryan Pickett has been his biggest surprise. He was their MVP last week against Seattle. Seven tackles, couple hits on the quarterback. This did, I mean, but these guys are underachievers, man. I, I'm not impressed, and they're going to end up getting – he's my former coach, Wes, but the way they're playing right now, they're going to end up – He's, they might run him out of town, man. That's just how it works. Guys don't perform. The coach gets fired. 266 yards on the ground in a game. It's two games has been like that. Yeah. Nickel for the Rams. Third and 13. Atlanta's five for seven tonight on third down. Vick in a shotgun. Snap to Michael. Looking left. Chase from the pocket here to the left side. Sending a man downfield. He's going to throw now. Looking for Michael Jenkins, who almost came back and made a great catch of the ball with the wine gross hanging on him. Oh, if that one is converted, 
we got to check the structure of the building. <laughs> 2.40 to play. And for the first time tonight, we get to look at Chris Moore, who finished the regular season averaging 40.6. Had just two punts at Seattle. Six for a 43.2 average in the ball game the week prior to at, at uh, New Orleans. Fourth and 13 from the nine. And uh, former Alabama player will be about halfway back the end zone. Sean McDonald stands at the Rams 46. Atlanta leads by 21 in the final 240 of this third quarter. Moore rips it. Hanging high, McDonald will signal for a fair catch and do so at the Falcon 46-yard line. It's a 37-yard punt by Chris Moore. First time tonight, throw away the penalty, that the Falcons have been three downs and out in the ball game, Gentlemen, play for 60 minutes and you can win a football game. Volunteer for 60 minutes and you can make a difference in your community. Visit jointheteam.com today and join the NFL's volunteer drive and give back to your community. Man, that's why Iowa State is a academic heavy. Yeah, but we don't have a lot of people in the NFL. Every time I turn around, there's a Tennessee guy on the field. Or in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. First. <laughs> come on, Chuck. Hey, it's my school, but I'm being honest. First and ten, <laughs> ball at the 46. Bulger from under center, best start of the night. Here's a reverse. And looking to throw the ball is Looker. Now he'll tuck it away. Brooking chasing him. And he will shove Dane Looker out of bounds. After an 11-yard gain, almost 11, 10 even for Dane Looker on the double on the reverse. It looks like Mike Martz has decided to get down in the sand and start drawing stuff up. Yep. It is 11 even on the run for Looker, and it'll be a first down at the 35 of Atlanta. And the play clock moves toward two minutes to play third quarter. Handed the ball back underneath to Marshall Falk, and he pitched the ball to Licker, Looker, and Looker was looking down the field for Torrey Holt. Licker. No, Looker. Curtis and Holt will go to the <laughs> left. Offset out of the weak side. Here's Bulger to throw. On first down, looks, shoots it back underneath. There's Steven Jackson inside the 30, taken down at the 28-27 yard line. Chris Draft, first time we've called his name tonight on an eight-yard catch. That's actually been there most of the night, guys. The uh, little dump to the back, and Bolger just has decided to try to push the ball down the field to his receivers, but Jackson and Falk have been there underneath all night. 90 seconds to go third quarter. St. Louis with the ball. First time they've been in Atlanta territory in this second half. Operating at the 27, Bulger looking to throw. Here comes Coleman, throws it back underneath Jackson, but he got, I mean, about the time Jackson reached for it, Draft was hanging on his back. It'll be a loss of three back to the 30, and it'll be third down and five. Yeah. Bulger will do anything not to get hit or even to think about getting hit, David. <laughs> well, he had a screen play on there, and Draft was all over him, Chuck. He's right there in the whole play. Well, give credit to Draft, but Steven Jackson made the mistake of a rookie. He went out there early. Draft just did the smart thing as a veteran should. Dome crowd to its feet. 49 seconds to play third period. It's third and five for St. Louis at the Falcon 30. Bulger drops, looks left. Back across the middle, that's caught, and that is Looker for a first down inside the 20 to the Atlanta 17-yard line. It's a 14-yard throw and catch with Rossum making the stop. Well, anytime you're playing man coverage and a receiver can go from one side of the field to the other side of the field on the outside of the numbers and catch the football, that means you're getting some time. And you can't give a quarterback that much time against man coverage. It'll be to the 17, first and 10. But well, we haven't had a good day rushing the passer, man. They've done a good job protecting Bulger for the most part. Bulger can let the clock expire on this quarter if he desires. And they get the play snap. Final play of the third quarter. Bulger throwing, and it is caught. Sean no, McDonald. They blew, blew it dead, Wes. Did they? Here's Terry McCauley. The, the clock ran out for the end of the third quarter. Ten-yard catch will not count. So we go to the fourth quarter of play. It's first and 10 for St. Louis at the Falcons 17-yard line with Atlanta leading the, the Rams offense. tonight for Atlanta. 267 on the ground, only 53 passing. The Rams have got 220 yards of passing, 77 yards of rushing. They just announced to the Georgia Dome that Allen Rossum has set an NFL record for punt return yardage. Here's Bulger to start the fourth quarter on first and 10 to 17. Looking to throw, sack! Bubble of the football, and Travis Hall's got it. The second Ram turnover of the ball game is recovered by the BYU veteran. 
Come on, man. You have to work with Travis on how to pick up a fumble run. <laughs> hey, long as he got it, that's all that matters. We talked about it at halftime. Ed Donatel bringing the blitz inside. Good job bringing Brooking. Good job bringing all the players getting on it. Good job by Brook. That's the play. Remember, bring the tackle, slant tackles in, bring Brook around. Great play. Wow. How about that to start the fourth quarter? Real Rams. good job of Brooking coming around. And, Chuck, it's a play you called for was looping the backer back yep. to the inside. The Falcons have been coming with a lot of edge pressure. This time they loop him back to the inside and he gets clean. Nice call. First play of the fourth quarter is St. Louis, his second turnover of the night. Bulger with an interception a moment ago now has fumbled the ball away and the Falcons take over from their 40 yard line on first and 10. Michael Vick slingshot out in the flat. Des White's first catch of the night. And he'll dig for three to the 43 before the tackle's made by Kevin Garrett. Boy, boy, or Travis they, Fisher, excuse me. They are primed for a play action on first down <laughs> downtown. Because the safeties are creeping up, and that snap of the ball there, the safeties were only about eight yards from the line of scrimmage. It's got to be a first down play, though. It doesn't apply here, but on first down, they got a chance. Vic has distributed the football tonight to seven different players and has not thrown for 60 yards yet. Second and seven at the 43. Crumpler in motion. Give is to T.J. Duckett, and the Rams get there in a hurry. Tino Isamoa, and also Bryce Fisher on the stop after a yard. It'll be third and six. Uh, the Rams have completely de have decided to completely forego trying to play any kind of coverage. They are now playing straight man coverage, press coverage on the outside, and they have eight men in the box trying to stop the run. Duckett comes out with Fred McCrary. In early stages of quarter four, it's 38 to 17 and a raucous Georgia Dome crowd here. Two to the left and one to the right and the rookie Michael Jenkins in motion through the formation. Vick in a shotgun. Snap from McClure. Michael sprints to his left. He'll set, throw back underneath. That's a catch by Jenkins near the midfield stripe. We'll see where they spot the football. They're only going to give him the 49. That's a tough break, and they'll be a yard short, and it'll be fourth and one. Well, Michael makes a poor throw. It's a sprint to get away from pressure, but he doesn't get the ball out in front. He throws the ball down, and Jenkins actually makes a tremendous catch. Damian Lewis was the guy pressuring Michael Vick. Well, nice. you're not kidding. Jenkins made a sensational catch. Nice hands. Nice hands. Atlanta comes up short on third down. They're now five for nine tonight, and here's Chris Moore to punt for the second time in as many possessions. Falcons were three and out the last time, and they are this time. McDonald standing at the Ram 14. Snap to Moore. He'll hang it high. I mean, way up there. McDonald's going to let it hit. It works toward the far sideline. It's going to roll out of bounds at the four and a half. Wow. Big Chris country. Moore. Big country. Big country got the, the home field throw. <laughs> 46 yard punt out of bounds at the four and a half. 38-17 at the Big Dome in Atlanta with 12.24 to go. Is Back after these change, messages. There's only one stop you need to make. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts at better prices every day. 12.24 to go in the ball game. Atlanta 38 and the St. Louis Rams 17 with Chuck Smith, David Archer. West Durham speaking to you from the Georgia Dome where it's first and 10 for the Rams at their five. And we're right in the Brady Smith Big Kahuna territory here, guys. <laughs> Here's Bulger handing to Marshall Falk, trying to cut to the outside, and Patrick Kearney. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. It's getting ugly in the, in the house. Bring it's getting the ugly wood. in the house. It's getting ugly in the house, Wes. It's getting ugly. Nice hit by Pat. Woo. Oh, my goodness. No gain on the play. Well, Kearney's got the tight end trying to block him. Kearney just ragdolls the tight end. And then what a form tackle from a defensive end on one of the greatest backs to play the game. Second and 10 at the five. Holt will come here to the left. Curtis goes to the right. Bulger operates from under center. Falk is the setback. Here's Brady Smith. He got him again. It's the big it's kahuna. The safety. Hey, Wes, you just called the big kahuna. Lord, he, is this the second game in a row? This is another record. What is going on today? The big kahuna, two games in the season. And you got to credit the crowd. The crowd was really loud right before the snap, and Brady Smith got a tremendous jump wow. on Orlando Pace. Pace couldn't even touch it. 
Wow. Brady Smith with the safety of Mark Bulger. Oh my goodness. He has Orlando Pace's number, name, license plates, <laughs> everything today. Time out on the field. Georgia Power scoreboard earlier today. Steelers over the Jets in OT, 20 to 17. Let's go back to the dome. Well, Stemke, the putter, will kick it away, and Alan Rossum drifts here to the near side. Record-setting night already for Rossum. He plays from the 25, 30, 35, 40 out to the 43 goes Rossum. Brady Smith, after registering a fumble or interception, it was a fumble in was a week fumble, two. Yeah. Week two, fumble, fumble, force fumble, fumble recovery touchdown in week two against Mark Bulger. Just gets the flat sack safety here tonight. My and, and goodness. It, anyway, you got to credit the crowd. I said it before, the crowd, Orlando Pace never got out of his out of his stance, and Brady was blew right around the corner. Falcons go from the 42 with 11.33 to play in the ball game, now leading 40 to 17. T.J. Duckett in the backfield. Behind Michael Vick. Play action by Vick, and here he goes. 45, Michael stops on a dime, slides down. Just over the midfield stripe at the Ram 49-yard line, ahead of the hit of Travis Fisher, the former Golden Knight of Central Florida. It'll be a gain, and Vick goes over 100 yards now. And for Michael, it's his fourth 100-yard rushing game of his career, a fourth 100-yard rushing game of the season on 103 on seven carries. Well, they have not defended the boot. I keep going back. This. They, they can't defend the bootleg. Yep. Second to one at the Ram 49. Crumpler and Beverly, the tight ends. High formation with McCurry and Duckett, and here is the hammer. TJ got two to the 47. It'll be a first down for Atlanta. Bryce Fisher makes the tackle. No relation to the aforementioned Travis Fisher. Well, let me go back, man. We talked about earlier on my keys. One of them was start fast, hit them in the mouth, let them know you're not in Seattle playing finesse. You're a physical. This Falcon team is physical. They have beat the Rams up, man. This is almost like, I mean, a prize fight that these guys look like they might not finish. They certainly wanted to come out and bloody their nose yeah, and see they how did. they would respond, and, and the Rams have not been able to stand up to the offensive line and tight ends of the Falcons. White and Price will go to the left. In motion comes Dez here to the near side. Vic again, bootleg, pumps, Price going down the field. Michael's going to back up, now throw it, and it is caught. Peerless Price with a great catch at the 38. Antoine Edwards makes his ninth tackle. It'll be just shy of the first down. And that was playground football right there by Michael Vick. Yeah, Mike, <laughs> but Mike ducked like he was going to take off running and then pulled back up. And Price did a good job of staying alive as a receiver. Sometimes you decide you're going to go ahead and block, but he stayed alive as a receiver and gave Michael an outlet. It's mm. a good Travis, catch, too. Travis Fisher made the, made the tackle. You're right, Chuck. It was a beautiful yeah. catch by Peerless Price. He had him draped. He was draped all over him. He's got a touchdown catch tonight as well. Crumpler does here as well tonight for Atlanta. Vic has thrown for two scores. Dunn has run for two, and Rossum has stole the show. Here's Duckett. Digging away inside, he'll have the first down. All the way to the Ram 32-yard line on a six-yard game. Well, now it's all about moving, folks. Tony Hargrove made the tackle for St. Louis. Well, I probably got the most powerful stat from the Rams' standpoint of the day. The Rams have never come back from a two-TD deficit in their franchise history in the playoffs. Ooh, how about that? Mm. It's crazy. Need more than two touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. Two receivers to the left. High formation behind Vic on first and ten at the 32 of St. Louis. Atlanta leads 40 to 17. Give us to Duckett, and he shifts and then falls forward for a couple to the 31. Let's call it a gain of about a yard and a half. And we'll call it second and eight just outside the 30, although they may sit it on the 31. Here's the other number that coming into tonight you had to know about. Since 1970, the home team is 136 in divisional playoffs. Since 1990, they're 45 and 11. That's 80%. Wow. Now, the NFC, it's even stronger. 
since 1990, the NFC is 25-3, the home team, in divisional playoffs. I'll give you another little number off of that in a moment. Second and eight at the 30. A long eight. Here's White in motion. Give will be to T.J. Duckett. Steps off the right side and almost got away from Robert Thomas, who made his fifth tackle of the night. And he, had he gotten away from Thomas, he might have gone the distance. It'll be third and short. Just shy of the first down for Duckett. The ball sitting at the 23. Now, remember the 45 and 11 number? Yep. Of the five of the 11 teams that have scored wins on the road in the divisional playoffs, five of those 11 winners reached the Super Bowl, including the Panthers last year. Remember the Panthers yeah. beat the Rams. What was it? Double overtime? I yeah, think in St. Overtime. Louis. Steve Smith gets right. in double overtime. Third and one at the 23 for Atlanta. Who's five of nine tonight on third down. Vic doing a good job of working the clock. Boy, isn't he? Under seven minutes to play. Here's the hammer. TJ's got the first down as he falls forward to the 21-yard line. Fourth straight carry in the drive for Duckett. Atlanta's now six of ten on third down. Antoine Edwards, the safety, made the stop. Well, the Falcons have rolled out the wrecking ball now. Yep. You Duckett's got 55 yards. The DVD tonight's got all of Atlanta's rushing arch. And that's what you expected. You expected those three guys to step up and carry the load. And the offensive line, when I say the wrecking ball is out, that's that offensive line now. The, re the reduction has taken place as far as bloody in their nose, and now they're beating them up with it. White will go left, Price to the right. McCrary all set to the weak side from the eye. First and 10 at the 21. Dunn has come back in. And here's Warwick Dunn adding already to a big night. Spins at the 10. Marker down at the 5. Touchdown, Atlanta. I think it's coming back on a hold. It's a 20-yard touchdown run, and it is a hold on uh -huh. Atlanta. 76, 10-yard <laughs> penalty, first down. Is that Schaefer? I think it's that? on Kevin Schaefer. That was the prettiest run. Warwick Dunn shook the draws off of the safety <laughs> on that play. Shook him down. like Shook him down like a bad cop in Tijuana. Oh. Shook him down. Woo. <laughs> Antoine Edwards. Good God almighty. The man looking for the lingerie. <laughs> Show it again. Look at the replay. I mean, he and he takes his time with it. This guy is an unbelievable runner. First and eight. Call. First, and call. first and 18, back of the 28. Good God almighty. What a running game the Falcons have. 6-0-4 to play in the ball game here at the Georgia Dome. Des White to the left, Peerless Price to the right. Pick from under center brings Eric Beverly in motion this time to the near side. Give us to Dunn. And, oh, it's oh, it's Vic keeping it far side 20, 15, and Edwards shoves him out of bounds, and Vic goes spilling over onto the south side of the Georgia Dome. Okay, after a 16-yard run, he'll be just shy of the first down yardage. What a fake, man. He faked us out. Oh, he got that me was a heck of a fake. Did he get you? No. Oh, here's the quarterback. He sees everything. <laughs> he got Kim. He got a, Did he fake everybody else out up here? Look. <laughs> got everybody. Look at him. Yeah. Except for Arch. Yeah, Arch. You know, quarterback sees it all. It'll be second and about a yard at the 12. Tell you what. It's time to stop. Mike, Michael Vick, Atlanta, by the way, on the brink of 300 yards of rushing tonight, David. You think uh, whoever they're going to play this next round is going to defend the bootleg? Yes, sir. Second in a uh, yard and a half. White in motion. Dunn the tailback. Give us to Warwick Dunn. And, ooh, ran into a wall of white shirts at the right side. And he'll be short. It'll be third down. This is where you get the po this point in time, guys, in the game where at five minutes left to go in this one, the Falcons – have pretty much sealed this football game. Yep. As Arthur Blank now makes his appearance on the sideline, the crowd responds. You don't want to get a guy banged up. You don't want to see a guy lose, lose a guy here in these last few minutes. Yeah. Well, the Falcon owner taken to task by a columnist in the newspaper here yesterday about not being on the sideline has been greeted with a standing ovation by this dome crowd who I think appreciates the fact that their owner is supportive of their franchise. No, here just... is Duckett. But just Again, the, leaning at the right side, and it'll depend on the spot. T.J. might come up just a short step or two from the first, but we'll check it out. Well, when Arthur's on the sideline, I'm down there, and I'm headed down there now. 
he's down there completely supportive, not worrying about what they do over there. He's not checking and checking you know what it is, Toe it's, Chuck. It's, it's about a guy that's never been down on a yeah. sideline before, and he doesn't understand what the owner, what the mm -hmm. owner-player relationship's really all about, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Falcons are going for it here on fourth and just short. It's about three inches for the first down. Duckett is the long, is the back with McCrary. And here's Vic, handing to TJ, left side, kept his feet, inside the 10 to the 5 goes Duckett. It's first and goal, Atlanta on a six-yard run where Robert Thomas makes the tackle. And now the Rams are getting ready to close it down. First and goal at the five. Duckett comes out with Crumpler and with Des White. I'll tell you what, it's 40 to 17 and getting ready to be maybe 47 to 17. Eight minutes have come off the clock on the drive. Give is to Dunn and not much there to the right side. In fact, nothing on the play. It'll be second and goal. Dave, there have been a boatload. This is getting ready to be the 12th play of the drive, or 13th play of the drive for the Falcons. Well, we came into this game talking about the Rams' inability to stop the run. During the season, the Rams gave up 72 plays with the 10 or more yards, and it's just continued to mount again tonight. They gave up eight to the Falcons in week two, seven by Michael Vick. It's been just more of the same. Atlanta's had the ball for better than 34 and a half minutes tonight. Vick from under center. Give us to Dunn. Again at the right side, and he didn't get much again. And it'll be third and goal. Tackle made by Archuleta, his fifth of the night. And the clock will be to the two-minute warning, and we'll get a break in the action here at the Georgia Dome. Two minutes to play. Atlanta's on its way to the NFC Championship game. 40 to 17 is the lead on the Rams. We'll continue. This is the Atlanta Falcons Radio Network. You're listening to the flagship station of Atlanta Falcons football, WCGC Atlanta 92.9 Dave FM, Rock Without Rules. Third and goal at the four when we continue. Atlanta with 322 yards of rushing tonight. The NFL playoff record set by the Chicago Bears against the Washington Redskins, 1940. They went for 382. I think there were some personnel moves made after that one. <laughs> Vic from under center. This drive is almost nine minutes old. Give us the ducket. TJ will step into the end zone. Touchdown. And he drives the last nail in the Rams coffin. Ninth rushing score of the year for Duckett in his first since that marvelous four touchdown effort against Oakland in early December. Well, if there was any effort left in the Ram defensive group that they were going to exert it on that play, certainly didn't want to give up another touchdown. But just like we've seen all night long, West. The Falcon offensive line mowed him down like a grove of trees. And T.J. drove her in the end zone. Four-yard touchdown run for Duckett. It's a huge drive. Point after by Feely is away and perfect with under two minutes to play. 1.54 to go. It is 47-17. A 30-point lead for Atlanta. More after this commercial time. Maybe the Jets to today, 20-17 to in overtime. Let's go back to the Georgia Dome. With David Archer, this is West Durham. I hope you'll join us on radio for our Heineken Falcon Coaches Show on Monday night. We will not be on location. We'll be coming to you from our network studios on Monday night, 7 to 8 o'clock, with our Falcon Coaches Show presented by our friends at Heineken. Feely, the end over end kick toward Kaysen in the end zone, two yards deep. He'll bring it out up to the 15. Brian Scott tried to angle it to 20, and Feely takes him down shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Again, we will not be on location with the Falcon Coaches call-in show on Monday night. We'll come to you from our studios at 92.9 Dave FM. Stay tuned. More after this commercial timeout. It's 47-17 on the way to the NFC title game as the Falcons. For the singular wireless call of the game. The new singular raising the bar. I'll bet that's going to be a tough decision to make. Glad I'm not making it. <laughs> 144 wow. to go. Atlanta 47 
St. Louis 17. Falcons are going to the NFC title game. Details on that in just a moment. Here is Bulger dropping back, being chased. Dumps out of the flat. That's Marshall Falk 25 and snowed under at the 26, led by Demario Williams. Gain of three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. Run clock run. 127 to go. The story goes like this. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock, or I'm sorry, tomorrow uh, afternoon is the Minnesota-Philadelphia game at Lincoln Financial. Throw back across the field. Sliding catch by Sean McDonald at the 41. It'll be a first down. Gain of 14 on the play. Minnesota 9 and 8, Philadelphia 13 and 3. The Eagles won a 27 to 16 game in, in Philadelphia on September the 20th. I think that was a Monday night game, as I recall. Yes, it was. Uh, Bulger will work from a shotgun. He'll set, pump, now throw to the far side, overshoots Dane Looker incomplete. If Philadelphia wins, Atlanta would go to Philadelphia next week to play for the NFC crown. If Minnesota wins, the Vikings will come here. Now, Mr. Archer, your early analysis of the Vikings Eagles. Well, I think Philadelphia has a lot to prove. I think that they're t everybody wants to talk about what the T.O. factor is. Terrell Owens not going to be able to play. There's several guys up there that want to step up and play. I think Brian Westbrook is the key to their football team. But can they stop a hot Dante Culpepper? Yep. Here's Bulger on second and ten, and that is caught. And making the catch is Dane Looker at the Atlanta 44 and a half yard line. A timeout taken by St. Louis with 15 on a 15 yard catch with 40 seconds left. Philadelphia's a very hot secondary group. Three of the four go to the Pro Bowl. Chuck has already made his way downstairs. I imagine that's a pretty, uh, pretty good sideline, Chuck. Oh man, it's exciting. Everybody, I just talked to Susan Bass, vice president. I mean, this place is electric, man. The fans are yelling, screaming. I mean, everybody's just hoping that Minnesota wins tomorrow night <laughs> to bring one more game back to the Dome. You guys hit it right on the head. Well, it would be ironic of sorts if Minnesota does win to come here and play Atlanta for the right to go to Super Bowl 39 in Jacksonville. It would be an interesting set of circumstances. Yeah, Chuck played on a team that Chuck, went yeah. up and drove a dagger in the heart of a 15 and one football team. You're not kidding. Looker and Curtis to the far side. McDonald and Torrey Holt here to the near side. Bulger slips it inside. This is Sean McDonald to the 37. And that is a gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. Rossum makes the tackle. Third, Another timeout. The last one timeout. burned by the Rams here. Crowd boos, of course. Sensing that St. Louis down 30 doesn't need to call timeouts if they're just trying to throw another score on the board. Yeah, I'm a little surprised they called timeout. We'll go back downstairs to Chuck when this ball game ends. We'll get some immediate reaction from some of these Falcon players and hopefully some coaches as well. Boy, Joe D. Camillus has got to be ecstatic about what has happened here tonight with his special teams unit. The numbers led us to believe that the Falcons were a dramatic favorite when it came to special teams play, both recoverage teams and, and return teams. And it, it's nice to see that a team that spends as much time on the special teams, I said it before, I've never seen a team that spends as much time, bears it out on the field. Second down and two now at the 37. And we get flags thrown and procedure. Prior to the snap, against ball start, offense number 64. It's on Larry five Turner. Five-yard penalty, second down. Seventh round draft pick from Eastern Kentucky. It'll back him up to the 42. It'll be second down and seven from there. Minnesota's an interesting team. All the off field stuff with number 84, and yet all they do is win the games. You know? A lot of talent on that offensive football team. Their problem is who's going to show up defensively. Right. Bulger to throw. Back down the seam. That is caught. And being taken down is Curtis. It'll be a first down to the 28. 23 seconds left. Artie Almer made the tackle for Atlanta. And Bulger up to the line with 17, 16, 15. He'll spike the ball. Crowd boos. I don't have to tell you that, though. You hear him. Stops the clock with 15 seconds left. The old clock play. And I'm quite sure Mike Martz has got his 28 and a half yard, 15 second touchdown play sitting over there. 
Yeah, but the key is, does he have that 31 point play? That he yeah, was that's, that's at? Kind of the one I think he was earlier looking for <laughs> that he used to call the timeout on. Bulger in the shotgun. Sets back across the middle. Marshall Falk with 10 seconds. Works to the outside. Whoa, he got beat up pretty good. Who was that? D'Angelo Hall that hit him? And that'll do it. Clock will run out. Ball game's over. Jim Mora gets the playoff victory. 47 to 17. And he will work to shake hands with Mike Martz. And the Atlanta Falcons, who were a touchdown favorite coming in. Archer, they make this one look easy. They really did. They looked like an 11-5 football team that deserved the bye in the first round of the playoffs and a team that took care of business during the regular season. All right, let's go downstairs to Chuck. All right, guys, I'm here with Alan Rossum, live Falcon, huh? All right, guys, I'm here live with Alan Rossum. Let me talk to Brian Scott. All right, back up to you guys, man. Okay, thanks, Chuck. So 47 to 17 is the final. We'll take a break, come back with more from the Georgia Dome. After back in the Georgia Dome, 47 17, the final downstairs to Chuck. I'm with Algie Crumpler. Algie, big touchdown in the first quarter. The team showed resilience. We came out and beat the Rams down, completely dominated them. How do you feel? You're going to the NFC Championship. Well, it's the battle of running the football. When you run the football the way we ran the football today, you kind of demoralize people. And uh, this is a testament to our offensive line up front, the way they handled the guys up front with St. Louis. And uh, it was just a great game up front for our guys. Talk about the performance. Allen Ross, an NFL record returning punts. Huge plays all day. Talk about the little man that can do it anytime he gets the rock. Well, this Allen Ross has been great all year, and I uh, wish he would have got to the Pro Bowl, but you got to understand, they kept kicking it to him. And you keep kicking the number 20, he's going to make plays. We've got so many special playmakers on our team, and, and uh, they just kept giving him the ball, and that special teams unit has been great all year. Number one punt return team in the NFL, number one punt team in the NFL. You know, we've got great special teams guys, and uh, Joe D. Camillo did a great job getting those guys prepared to play. Everybody was itching and ready to go. Do you care Minnesota, Philly, they play tomorrow? Do you care who you play in the NFC Championship? Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't matter, but uh, if Minnesota wins, they got to come up in the dome, and, and you see this atmosphere today was rocking, and it, it sure would be nice today, another game at home, but it really doesn't matter. We got to go out and prepare for whoever the game is going to be against and go out and win the game. Congratulations, Algie. Thanks, Chuck. All right, guys, it's Bedlam down here on the field. The Falcons are headed to the NFC Championship. Live on the field is Chuck Smith. Back up to you, Wes. All right, Chuck, the game summary delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you with David Archer, Wes Durham at the Dome? Falcons beat the Rams tonight, 47 to 17, to move into the NFL Final Four, if you will. Vikings and Eagles tomorrow afternoon at Lincoln Financial. The winner, the winners will play next Sunday at 3 o'clock, January 23rd at 3 o'clock. If it's Philadelphia, it'll be at Lincoln. If it's Minnesota, can you imagine the environment we'll have here a week from Sunday, Mr. Archer? Well, it can't be much better than it was tonight. Woo. You know, we uh, Stephanie Blank is here with her, Arthur's wife. She had a lot to do with what went on during the week, pumping the fans up about wearing your red, bring the bring the extra dollar for the tsunami relief fund. Right. A, a tremendous atmosphere generated by the fans here in Atlanta. Numbers bear out tonight. Atlanta nearly 400 yards of total offense. I mean, it's going to look like a misprint around the country tomorrow. 327 yards of rushing tonight by the Falcons. Well, I've never heard of it before. Of course, we had to go back to, what, 1940? 1940. To, to find a number that somewhat matched it a little bit more, but uh, just a tremendous effort in the modern era to pound somebody with the run. Total physical reduction. Warwick Dunn, 142 yards tonight. Michael Vick, 119. T.J. Duckett, 66. All of them had touchdowns. Dunn had one. Duckett had one. Uh, Vic threw for two in the ball game for 327 on the ground, 70 yards of passing. Here's a stat, too, that'll shake some people up. Atlanta had the ball for 35 minutes and 35 seconds in the ball game tonight. Well, that just added to the fact that they beat that defense up for a long, long time, and it culminated with that long drive of nine minutes and 45 seconds in the TJ Ducks at touchdown. Well, the Rams held to 77 yards of rushing tonight, 19 first downs, 262 for Mark Bulger passing. 339 total. They did have two turnovers. Bulger, a fumble and an interception. Uh, both teams penalized four times, and the Rams only had it 24 minutes, 25 seconds. We got to take a break. Come back with our playoff edition of the Drink. Granger guys that got it done on a winning night at the Big Dome, Atlanta 47, St. Louis 17. Now, this local message on the Falcons ready.